and welcome to Life is Spiritual Presents Symbols Part 12C. My name is Tim Simon, also known as Baba Zion, also known as Bamboo, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Erika, Erika Mukisa Kimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha or Mami Zion. Amen. Amen. And as promised, we are continuing with symbols. Yeah. And as you know, symbols are a language that is spoken uh, through symbols and and signs and the occult or the powers of darkness uh, communicate to one another through these symbols. And so it is important that we know at least some of them because there's a wide range of these symbols. But at least if we know some of them, the main ones, we understand the language that is being spoken in this world and we are reminded by these same symbols what side we are on. But and before the, we begin. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is they they play with our subconscious mind. Yes. They 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 put everything right before us, but they know that some people are so blind to understand the meaning of these signs and symbols. Yeah. It's like uh, driving and you don't know how to read the signs and symbols, you can cause an accident. That's, right. That's why many Christians end up becoming victims. Yes. of the enemy not because we are powerless but because we are ignorant and the bible says my people perish due to lack of knowledge yes. but this information we are giving you is not to instill fear but is to bring knowledge to bring light and so that darkness can disappear amen so before we begin let's start with a word of prayer Mighty Father, we give thanks for the gift of life, for the gift of another day, for the gift of an opportunity to serve our fellow brothers and sisters in the kingdom. Mighty Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would have the preeminence and take over, that knowledge may be imparted, that the word may also be imparted, that faith may be built up and not fear. Mighty Father, because we know that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, Mighty Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over every viewer, spirit, soul, and body. And we pray, Mighty Father, that they may remember what they have learned here. We do this in obedience to your word that commands us, saying to study, to show yourselves approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so as we study Holy Spirit, we pray that you would guide us and give us the words to speak to the body, that we may be educated and enlightened and to understand how to fight our enemy and win. We pray these things believing in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So, Symbols part 12C. Yes. Amen. Amen. We I'm thank excited. God. We thank God. We thank God for where we have reached. And we thank God that these things are being revealed so that wherever you see them, like what Erica said, if you're on the road and um, you see a sign and it's, it's actually a stop sign, but you don't know that that sign means stop, then you're going to cause an accident. You're going to hurt either yourself or somebody else. And that's what's happening in the world. We don't know the symbols that we're seeing all over the place on causes, on companies, logos, um, you know, businesses, government offices. They're all over the place. And we are just going through stop signs. The church has been going through right through stop signs, causing accidents, causing confusion, causing all, all manner of, you know, disorder because we are being communicated to, and yet instead of responding to these communications, we are ignoring them. Yes. And so it is about time that the body of Christ becomes symbolically literate. Yeah. Where you can read the signs all around you. And it's important to be able to read the signs to know who is for you, who is against you. Many Christians are working in places where the signboard is clearly telling you, hi, we work for the devil. And yes. you're applying for a job in that place. But the signs are telling you that you have no business there. And you're actually praying that God would give you a job there. And so there are, th there are certain things that God wants us to know so that we can be enlightened. We can know um, what, you know, because the, when the enemy is attacking humanity, yeah. do you know that there's a rule spiritually? He has to tell you what he's doing. Yes. He has to announce. You have to agree either <laughs> Consciously or subconsciously, you have to agree yes. because there's nothing he cannot do 
uh, without you also participating or getting involved knowingly or unknowingly. Yes. Yeah. So there's two levels of consciousness. There's that conscious, you know, your mind is aware and alert of, and then there's the subconscious awareness, which uh, is your heart that, that Jesus calls that part of your 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 humanity your it's the heart intuition. yeah your life is an overflow of the contents of your heart so whatever is in your inside your heart jesus said a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things yes and there is nothing that enters into the heart easier or quicker than symbols symbols are easy to remember so they pass through the conscious mind and enter into the sub subconscious mind very easily however just because you do not understand a symbol does not mean that that symbol has lost its power. Just because you do not understand a symbol does not mean that that symbol does not have any relevance in your life. It does. You're just ignorant of it. So <clears throat> as the Lord continues to reveal these symbols, it's not for us to be fearful. It is for us to be inspired. It's for us to be to understand the world that we live in is covered in this form of darkness. This is the world's religion. This is what the world practices. And, the, and Jesus said something very key. He said, the world cannot hate their own, but me, the world hates. Yes. Why? Why does the world hate Jesus? He went on to explain why the world hates him. He said, because I testify of them that the works they do are evil that is what they hated about him yes. he was exposing them and that's why any church that does not expose the kingdom of darkness they're not doing what jesus does because yeah. jesus said that is what i do and that is the reason why the world hates me so when you see the world loving a christian leader hmm. So there's something very wrong because they are supposed to hate that Christian leader because that leader is exposing the world and pointing out the evil that the world is doing. And when they don't do that, then the world starts to love them and the world starts to give them rewards and give them fame and, and, and accolades and give them the front covers of magazines. And beware of such people. The world is supposed to hate your message. And as a matter of fact, we are not surprised every time our videos get demonetized. It's because of the information that we are giving. Where there is light, darkness has to disappear. So yes. the more you expose the enemy, the more people get free. And that's what the enemy doesn't want. He doesn't want you to get free. Because what does the Bible say about the truth? You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So by knowing the truth about these signs and symbols, you're not going to, to, to be a victim of the enemy. Rather, you will know when to pray, how to pray, and where to pray. Yes, you understand what is going on around you. You can find yourself in, the, in a location that is in the midst of symbols that are screaming out who they represent. Yes. And yet you are not seeing it. You, you see, because that's the thing Jesus was complaining about. Because seeing they see not. Mm -hmm. And hearing they do not hear. Yes. And he was complaining. He was lamenting. It's not that it was saying a good thing. It's not a good thing. You know, so uh, let there be an end to that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So. Symbols, part 12C. Let's start with a symbol called the Leviathan cross. Wow. It's also known as the satanic cross. It is a combination of the infinity symbol. You know that the, the number eight is also the infinity symbol. It's a symbol for infinity. Because yes. it keeps going and going and going. It's also similar to the circle. Yeah. It keeps going and going and going. In a, in a circle, it's a symbol of infinity. Um, and so... It's also known as the satanic cross. It is a combination of the infinity symbol, which is the eight that is lying down on its side here. And it's a combination of that eight and the cross of Lorraine, which is a double cross. It's two lines instead of with the cross being one, uh, one uh, vertical line and, and one horizontal, horizontal. It's two horizontal with one vertical. So it's called the, the cross of Lorraine. However, it is also the insignia 
or the symbol of a Scottish Rite Inspector, Scottish Rite Inspector General, Honorary, also known as the 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemason. Now we've already explained who the Freemasons are. We've already explained that this is the synagogue of Satan. We already know through their own writings. It's not a conspiracy theory. I think even that statement conspiracy theory was invented so as to, to deflect or to, 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 yeah, to derail anybody who's attempting to reveal the truth. It's a, it's a brilliant way of, of accusing somebody who's revealing the truth of being a liar. So, or of being misled or misinformed or uneducated. And, and you know, it, it, there's a spell that is attached to that word, uh, you know, uh, uh, conspiracy theorist. You know what I mean? There's a spell. As soon as somebody calls you a conspiracy theorist, People it means that you're... You serious. Yeah, it means that you're uneducated, that you don't... Well, I mean, if that's the case, then they have to call the, the whole Bible a conspiracy theory because the Bible says that there's a devil. Yes. But they want to say that there is no devil and that you're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yes, like we expose uh, Doja Cat in the la last documentary yes. and then you see the the album she has released mm -hmm. uh, you see how she's looking you see the demonic uh the everything is demonic yeah but if you say that she has been initiated and that she is uh, a puppet of satan they'll call you a conspiracy theorist yes. they'll say oh no that's just art that's mm -hmm. because the blindness is real you know the they 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 desire the lie more than the truth and they will pay for that. Yeah. So it is also the insignia of a Scottish Rite Inspector General Honorary. That is the title given to this Scottish Rite Freemason, also known as the 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemason. Now, a Freemason is one who practices, especially the 33rd degree, practices deep witchcraft. It is sorcery. It is witchcraft that they stole from Egypt. It was what Pharaoh was practicing when he subjugated and enslaved the children of God. So it is that same kind of sorcery that subjugated the children of Israel that they are practicing here. And that's why they're on the top of the financial system. All right. So here's this other symbol for the 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemasonry. As you can see, it's a double headed eagle with a crown on top of it. The crown represents, obviously it represents uh, a position of authority or empowerment. Uh, and then the double head, it's it's uh, representing the duality of, of both uh, spiritual and physical. You see that the, the pyramid in the midst of the, the chest of this uh, bird, you see that it says 33, representing the 33rd degree, degree. of Freemasonry. You see that this thing is uh, perched on top of a sword. And why 33rd? 33rd is... They are fighting. They, they have the Antichrist spirit that is fighting Jesus. Yes. When Jesus died, how old was he? 33. 33 years old. old. So everything they do is symbolic. It has deeper meaning than what you can see on the surface. And then it it is designed to fight against God. They are diametrically opposed to everything that is of God. Yet they want to live in God's creation. Yet they want to enjoy God's air and they want to eat God's food and they want to drive in machines that were made from materials that God created. But yeah. they don't want the creator. They want the created. And then the most interesting bit of it is that when the enemy killed Jesus at 33, he thought he had ended his mission. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that he was working against himself. Yes. As usual, they always work against themselves, but they don't know. Yes. They are foolish and they think they are wise. Exactly. In fact, the Bible says there is no wisdom against the living God. There is no wisdom against God. Mm. There's no wisdom. That, that, that area of wisdom does not exist. Yeah. There's no wisdom that can give you the upper hand against God. God. All right. So when two lines pass through a stick, it is often referred to as the double cross. A double cross means betrayal. So a double cross with an infinity symbol looks like eternal betrayal. A double cross with a circle below it also represents infinity or eternity. Originally being an alchemy symbol for sulfur. Remember, alchemy means sorcery, witchcraft. 
You're trying to cut, you're trying to change a stone into gold. You're trying to look for a shortcut of, of earning, of achieving a level of success without going through the already established way that God has said. You're trying to find a shortcut. That's why Jesus said a thief and a robber comes through the back door. Yes. But the good shepherd, he comes through the front door. He comes the right way. Hmm. That's why when Jesus comes into your life, he comes as when you have asked him to come. Yes. But you see this devil, he's sneaky. He's looking for a side entrance. He's trying to get over on you in a way that is is a is like a legal loophole. He's taking mm-hmm. advantage of a loophole. He'll, he's willing to go in the back way. Mm-hmm. He's willing to go in through the window. He's He said, whosoever enters in the house, not through the front door, but through some other way. Jesus said the same is a thief and a robber. That's why when you see Santa Claus coming in through the chimney, coming in through the fireplace and not through the front door, what did Jesus say about him? The same is a thief and a robber. However, I digress. Please forgive me. All right. Yeah, you're, you're correct. Mm. What you're saying makes sense. If if a thief wants to 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 steal, in a, in, let's say, like one time I was attacked by thieves, they, they had to spray cow foam in my room so that I fall asleep and then they break mm-hmm. and come and steal. They are cowards. They, mm-hmm. they, they, they don't want to confront. If a man wants to take advantage of a woman, he would drag that woman. He's a coward. He can't do it when the woman is strong. He wants the woman to become weak so that he can take advantage and that's how the enemy functions he's a coward he will lie to you he will show you the gold the good things the enjoyment the excitement but he will not show you the consequences so originally it was an alchemy symbol for sulfur the symbol called the leviathan cross became a satanic symbol and took this name after it was adopted by anton levey who made it his symbol in the Church of Satan in the 1960s. LaVey started the Church of Satan for those who wanted to leave Christianity and abandon the moral values of Christianity while persuading his followers that their fleshly desires should be fulfilled and not suppressed, since according to LaVey, God was a mythical person created by men to keep men in bondage. So this is Anton LaVey. As you can see, He's, point, he's, he's posing in front of a pentagram, which is wow. the, uh, the goat head. It's called the goat head of Mendes. You see this pentagram? That's the same pentagram that Adronia... My grandmother used to draw and she, she used to sacrifice and, and, and you know, goats. Mm-hmm. And, and she, would, she would open portals and we would see demons, beings coming onto this uh, planet from, yes. from their world. Because, you know, the enemy cannot function alone. He needs our help. He Why? Needs man. God gave us this planet. God gave us dominion here. So there's nothing the devil can do without support of man. And there are many people who have compromised their integrity. They have betrayed humanity. They mm-hmm. are betraying humanity. They want to kill fellow human beings. Can you imagine recently they somebody killed uh, two, two, three babies in Uganda. Innocent children ranging from five to three years. You know, innocent children. He, he, I don't know where they took them from. Maybe stole them from their parents. So humanity is betraying humanity by working with the enemy. In fact, the only reason why Satan is able to accomplish so much in this world is because he has accomplices. Human yeah. beings are working with him. Mm -hmm. And human beings that work with him are communicating to one another. And they all might not speak English, but they can all communicate to one another, even if they don't speak English. How do they communicate? Through symbols, through these symbols that we're teaching you and we're showing you. So that when you see them, you know who are the collaborators of the kingdom of darkness and you can avoid it just by having knowledge. Just by having, just by studying to show yourself approved a workman. You're supposed to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So in obedience to that commandment, we have to study. Because if you don't, they will surpass you in knowledge. And And if they do, then that means they will have the upper hand. And not forgetting that they are hybrid children. The 
people who have compromised and, and slept with fallen angels and given birth to hybrid children. And those hybrid children are deceiving and they are multiplying. They are sleeping around, multiplying so that, you know, there are some people, even if you preach the gospel, they can never be saved. That's why they, because they are not like us. They are not 100% human. And that's why they love to worship things like fertility. Yes. Because for us to procreate is natural. Yeah. You know, it's a commandment of God. Yes. So why would we worship procreation itself? But for them, they were never meant to exist in this world. Yes. So they worship fertility. And that's why you'll see that they have fertility symbols mm-hmm. where they're worshiping the goddess of fertility or the yeah, goddess Mother of Earth. reproduction and things like that. But we'll get into that. But this is Anton LaVey. Again, he's posing in front of a pentagram the, the goat head is inside of that pentagram, which is a is a star, which is inverted, meaning that it's five it's a five pointed star which is pointing down. So apparently there are no accounts in history attributing the said symbol to Satanism before LaVey adopted it. We're talking about that double cross. There are also no known records indicating the date for the symbol's exact origin, but it is very old as alchemy is an ancient pagan discipline. Remember I told you al- alchemy is uh, it's, it's, it's sorcery. You're attempting to create wealth out of nothing. You want to turn an ordinary stone into gold. There are people who really want to do that and they use alchemy and sorcery to make that happen. All right, so... As far as the Church of Satan is concerned, it represents protection and the balance between humans. And the infinity sign at the bottom represents the entire universe. The Church of Satan uses the symbol to mock Christian belief and depict that humans are their own center of balance and do not need God or any other mythical being to ensure balance in the universe, so they say. One of the most common locations you can find this symbol is in something we see almost every day, Oreo cookies. Have you seen this Oreo cookies? If you look closely at Oreo cookies and like just being kids, like we grew up on this stuff. Yeah. We didn't know we were partaking in things, in symbols that are of the devil. It explains why children nowadays are getting cancer. And it exp- and it also explains why we were so rebellious, man. We were crazy. We just my dad used to say we were drunk. <laughs> but we but we never used to take alcohol. We were kids. The but food he, that you were feeding on. Yeah, we were feeding on things that are covenanted to devils, but we didn't know it and our parents were buying it for us. All right. We used so to think cancer was for adults very old people who are about to die but these days you find a one-year-old suffering from cancer a two-year-old and you're wondering when did this baby start uh, rotting you see they're eating things that are covenanted to the devil and that whether they like it whether they know it or not it gives the devil their legal Legal. right you see the, the enemy the bible describes satan as being very subtle they don't understand what subtle is You are dealing with a being with a very brilliant mind and he understands how to outthink a human being. He understands how to approach you in a very subtle way. So he can manufacture products and put them in a supermarket and you innocently come and buy them and eat them. Children's clothes, be aware also. and And by so doing, you have legally brought him into your house, legally. And these are things that people are consuming every day or they con- they consider these things to be everyday items, you see. So how is that for subtlety? How is that for being shrewd and cunning? So you're dealing with a very cunning being. You're dealing with a very subtle, a very, a very methodical and a very malevolent, brilliant genius, True. but very evil. OK, so without God's word, you are not going to be able to outthink him. The Bible describes him in Ezekiel. He says concerning Satan, he says, thou sealest up the sum. He said he was perfect in beauty. You know what it means to seal up the sum? It means that concerning where mathematics is concerned, he is perfect. So you see all these, you see all this technology, you see this, you see like uh, an oil rig out in the middle of the sea. Yes. And they're pumping oil from there. Where do you think all of this knowledge is coming from? It's coming from the kingdom of darkness. It's coming from the kingdom of darkness. He's giving them skill. He's giving them knowledge. He's giving them mathematics. He's giving them physics and science and chemistry on levels that we have not even begun to think about yet. So 
with that kind of knowledge, with that kind of understanding, he, he can he can manipulate man in ways that man has not yet taken into account. Yeah. He can create an engine. He can build an engine, give that to mankind. That man makes wealth from that engine. Then from that engine, he 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 uses the oil that is in the ground to to run that engine. And now that engine, those engines need this oil and this oil creates an industry and that industry creates a cycle. And that cycle is, is, is pumping things out of the ground and destroying our world yes. while simultaneously getting man to participate in it, not knowing that man is participating in his own demise. The whole thing is his brainchild. Do you understand? Yeah. It's a strategy of the kingdom of darkness. But then again, you're asked, okay, then if we don't use cars, then what are we going to use? Mm -hmm. So you're you're dealing with a brilliant thinker, okay? he's he's. He, let's not underestimate the devil here. Hell is full of souls because he's a very brilliant thinker. But that's not to praise yeah, him. It's just to, to deceive angels. He deceived angels. I, yeah, these are beings that are superior to man. Yeah. And according to the Bible, there must be. politician. Yeah, he deceived a third of them. So we don't know how many that is, but I think it's. It might be in the billion. There could be billions of many angels or trillions. Angels, many. Yeah. So. If he can deceive Abaddon. Yeah. Abaddon is a huge, like bigger than Saturn himself. He's capable of doing more more things than Saturn can do. He, in fact, even Saturn is scared of Abaddon, because Abaddon is is not a small angel. But if he managed to deceive him, small as he is mm -hmm. compared to Abaddon, if he managed to deceive him, no wonder the whole world has been deceived. Mm -hmm. It's just the grace of God that is shining light to to his people and people are now beginning to break from the kingdom of darkness. You know, when, when the word is preached and the Holy Spirit convicts and, and you realize that all along you have been deceived, there is that joy you get, you know, you feel free. The day I gave my life to Jesus, I felt free. The freedom I cannot explain to anybody. So the symbol of the Leviathan cross is right there on the Oreo cookies that people are eating every day. So Satan is getting his way, is finding his way into your, onto your meal table. He's finding his way into your house. He's finding his way. His symbols are right there. Like if you have Oreo cookies in your house right now, you have a symbol of the Leviathan cross staring at you and you, maybe your children, your friends, your guests have been devouring them. So it is important that we pray over the things that we eat before we eat them. Now, the Leviathan cross, they said, that's, that's, that's such an evil being, Leviathan. The Bible speaks of Leviathan in the book of Job towards the last chapter. And he says that Leviathan is king over all of the children of pride. And so when you see... Uh, do you see the homosexuals coming down the street the pride, with, the with a, very, yeah, a, a sign that says pride and who is their king leviathan and how did he get there how did we find ourselves having where where homosexuals seem to have more rights than everybody than everybody else and yet they're a minority and and and, and it's only growing it's only getting worse yes now it's going to get to a place where a child can decide if, uh, they're not going to be a boy anymore. They're going to be a girl. It they're five. They're five years old, but they've decided. You know what I mean? And there's nothing you can do about it. So how do we get there? How, how does mankind become so stupid? Gradually, he's been the enemy's been feeding you. The enemy's been covenanting himself to you slowly but surely. Very yes. cunning, very hardworking, very consistent. So 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 3. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. All right, so that symbol, the Leviathan cross, you, now whenever you see it, you'll be able to recognize it. 
It's 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 right there on cookies, and you'll see it in other places. Whenever you see that double cross, you'll know. Okay, this is Scottish right Freemasonry, thirty third degree, the Leviathan's cross. It's like, man, these guys are representing this thing, and I'm here. You know what I mean? You'll be able to say, okay, I'm out of here. And before you even go to another symbol, uh, you spoke about children, and and this is a very important topic. Children, the enemy knows right now he cannot deceive you because you are knowledgeable. There is a way you were raised and he cannot erase whatever your parents planted in you. So now the target is the children. And how does it begin? Look at the clothes that mm -hmm. they, they are printing nowadays. You, you should look at these clothes with skeletons, mermaids, uh, unicorns. You're, you're looking at, at, the, at the designs, just the designs. This is a baby. You just gave birth. But the, the, way, the way they have, you know, they come rainbows everywhere. I don't say a rainbow is bad, but you know what the spirit of the age, yes. what, what is ruling. If the meaning, if the enemy could... If he was able to change the meaning of the rainbow in the eyes of the child. Yes. So that when they see a rainbow, they believe that, oh, wow, God is smiling on homosexuality. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. That, that is evil brilliance, man. That is evil. That is so evil. I ordered an outfit for my baby. I saw on that outfit, there was a witch flying, a sorcerer flying on a broomstick. But the way they designed it, it was so colorful. A parent would think it is a flower. I had to get rid of it immediately. Thank God I did not put it on my child. But these are the signs and symbols you have to pay attention to. Look yes. at those clothes that your children are wearing. Yes. Look at the programs, the cartoons that the children are watching. Parents, you will be yeah. amazed. And if you go through your children's room and just look at everything, all of the clothes, and look at all the symbols after this, you'll be amazed how much, how far Satan has infiltrated your home. Yeah. You'll be amazed. And this is the thing that God is saying because many are praying for breakthroughs. Many are praying for this, that, and the other. Sometimes your children put on certain clothes and they just start behaving like crazy people. You, you know? Remember that dress we had bought for Zoe? It had a very... Uh, a very we hadn't read the word because i had just ordered online but after she fell and almost broke her teeth i checked and i was like what all along this girl has been wearing this word it was a very bad word like rebellious and and troublesome and we just by wearing it the first day she got an accident yeah yeah so there are clothings there's things that you can bring into your house that satan has the legal right to 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 reach you with because you have it in your possession if you don't want satan in your house throw his stuff out all right so there are things that are covenanted to the devil and if those things are in your house then satan has the legal right to be there his spirits his evil spirits have an e a legal right to be in your house because you have their thing and if they have if that thing of course is covenanted to the devil and you have it in your possession whether you knew it or not, ignorance is no excuse. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is no excuse. It's not going to help you either positively or or negatively. It won't help. It doesn't help. All right. So let's move right along. Um, the next symbol is the symbol of the Illuminati. And what we're looking at is a pyramid, and above that pyramid, you see what is called the the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. And I want you to notice that the all-seeing eye of Lucifer is casting a blinding light upon the whole world, upon the globe. And even that globe is a deception because that's what the world, the world wants you to believe that the earth is it's in that, is in round. the shape of a globe. But the Bible speaks differently. And the, the, the enemy, the the kingdom of darkness wants you to believe that that is the shape of the world that's how the world looks that the that the whole earth is a globe and that it is traveling through space at over a hundred thousand kilometers per hour but the bible says that the earth is still that it does not move so moving right right along this illuminati symbol represents clearly represents uh the, the synagogue of Satan. So this organization was founded on May 1st, 1776 by a man by the name of Adam Weishaupt. He was educated by the Jesuit order. 
his original goal was to establish a Protestant organization to fight Jesuitism by using Jesuit methods. The goal included subverting Freemasonry to its aim of world domination by any and every means. Politically speaking, it's the Illuminati tendencies. The Illuminati tendencies were Republican. Religiously, it was anti-Christian. Its members were pledged to bind obedience to their superiors, and this was ensured by a strict system of secret confession and monthly reports checked by mutual espionage. After obtaining control of certain Masonic lodges, Weishaupt and his associates recklessly vaunted their growing power, writes historian Lady Queensborough. So former Illuminati trainer, Mr. Savali from San Diego states, the Illuminati is a group that practices a form of faith known as enlightenment. It is Luciferian, and they teach their followers that their roots go back to the ancient mystery religions of Babylon, Egypt, and Celtic, Celtic Druidism. They have taken what they consider the best of each and joined them together into a strong occult discipline. All right. So, in 1996, when I left the Illuminati, he says, approximately 1% of the U.S. population was either a part, sympathetic, or a victim of mind control of the Illuminati. In the Illuminati, there are three classes of adepts. An adept is one who is well-educated, enlightened, or a professional. Mm -hmm. So, there are three classes of adepts with three degrees in each. One is called nursery, which is preparation novice, minerval, and illuminatus minor. Then there is, so that's, that's nursery, preparation novice, minerval, and illuminatus minor. Then there's masonry, symbolic apprentice, fellow craft, and master mason, illuminator major, or scotch novice, and the illuminatus dirigens, dirigens or scotch knight. Scotch Knight. All right, so the mysteries include priest, prince, regent, magus, or philosopher, and rex, king, homi ray, or archabite, an areopagite. Aria, Sorry about that. Areopagite. <laughs> let's study, let's find out what, what in the world is an areopagite. Areopagite. Learn something new every day. Dionysus, the Areopagite, was an Athenian judge at the Areopagus court in Athens who lived in the first century. Okay, so an Areopagite clearly is somebody who lived in the during the Greek Empire in in Athens. And who did they worship in Athens? Who did they worship there? That was uh, the Greek philosophy, yeah. which which is what the major universities of our world today are are guided by greek philosophy and that means the worshipers of lady diana that's why you see the that you see columbus you see yes. you see the worship of the the woman goddess yes. of the mother goddess yeah. diana and mm -hmm. her other names columbus and etc so nursery masonry and then there's mysteries now the following quotation is almost is is most illuminating Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect, the one visible and the other invisible. Visible. The visible society is a splendid camaraderie of free and accepted men enjoined to devote themselves to ethical, educational, fraternal, patriotic, and humanitarian concerns. The invisible society is a secret and most august fraternity, whose members are dedicated to the service of a mysterious arcanum, archondrum, secret mystery. This was written by Manley P. Hall in his Lectures on Ancient Philanthropy, oh, Philosophy, Lectures on Ancient Philosophy. Hall was a free, was Hall, Manley P. Hall was Freemasonry's greatest philosopher, according to the Scottish Rite Journal of September 1990. So, 
these are their own writings. This is not a conspiracy theory. These are their own writings. This is Manly P. Hall, who was a respected Freemason. So even if you know a Freemason who's telling you that Freemasonry and, and Rotary Club and Knights Templar, these are just uh, philanthropic fraternities, brotherhoods where men become better men. That's nonsensical because we know from their own writings, from the writings of Manly P. Hall, yeah. that Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity. fraternity. Okay, that means that there are those who are on the outside, who are on the various de lower degrees, who do not know that on the, on, in the higher degrees, we are dealing with those who are dedicated to learning the ancient mysteries that date back to where? Babylon. And that is where all the false religion comes from. Yes. Babylon and Egypt. And of course, which went on to Greece, to Athens, and then went on to Rome. And right now, till this day, we are still under the system of Rome, with the spiritual headquarters being in the Vatican, the okay. papacy. Now, those that are visible, I may say that they are like the celebrities that we see. The, those that are just looking for money and fame and success and uh, to be noticed, to build a career, the Doja Cats, the Rihanna's, the puppets. Chris Brown, those are they're puppets. the puppets. Now, those that are not seen, those are the hybrid. Those are the children of darkness, children of Satan, his seed. They are the ones that give instruction to these ones because they know exactly what they are doing. Now, these ones are deceived. By the time they find out that they were deceived, they are taken out, they are killed. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it's a fraternity within a fraternity. Yes. Yes, and so those who are on the outside fraternity, the lower levels of Freemasonry, they will be doing the philanthropy. Mm -hmm. They'll be distributing food. Charity. They'll be doing charity. Concerts. And so, and so you'll see them doing these things and you'll say, ah, these Freemasons are good guys. And, and you know, that's that's by design. That's their strategy. Like to, Beyonce was supporting the the LGBTQ community. In, when she got the award, she, she's like a, a human rights activist. Mm -hmm. Pre presenting yourself as if you're fighting for human rights, as if you're fighting for the rights of people, etc., etc., to pose as if you're a charitable individual, yes. so that people would look upon you with favor. It's a it's a dishonest way of being charitable because when Jesus commanded us to be to be charitable, he said, "Don't when you when you give to the poor." In Matthew chapter six, he said, "Don't be like the hypocrites." For they want to be seen giving to the poor. They want everybody to see them doing it. Jesus said, behold, they have their reward. But when you give to the poor, make sure that your left hand does not know what your right hand is doing. Meaning that when you give to the poor, do so quietly. Don't, don't desire to be seen of men so that when you're, when you're giving, God who sees in private will reward you openly. All right. So... They're doing it for the purpose of being seen as if they are a charitable organization. But we know from their own writings that they serve the ancient mystery gods of Babylon. And we already studied Nimrod, Semiramis, his wife and his mother at the same time who had a child called Tammuz. So you can imagine the spiritual wickedness that came that was birthed into our world as a result of a man sleeping with his own mother. What kind of child was birthed through that ungodly union? It brought forth a son called Tammuz. Now, when you see Semiramis posing with Tammuz, or you see Mary posing with a young boy, who are you looking at? You are looking at Semiramis and her son Tammuz. And her son husband. Yes, and, and then you'll often see this same Tammuz holding a globe in his hand. So why does Tammuz, why is he so obsessed with you believing that the earth is a globe? You need to understand that. You need to investigate that. You need to research it. And I would advise that you watch the video that I've already recorded concerning the alien deception part one. It explains, the Bible explains how the earth is shaped, how God created the heavens and the earth, how the ancient Hebrews believed that the heavens and the earth have been created. And then we compare that with the lie that NASA is putting forth and and the Catholic Church is putting forth. It is it is two, two, form, two stories of creation. There's the biblical story of creation, and then there's the another, worldly. there's a worldly, there's a Vatican story of creation, which is called a heliocentrism. 
the heliocentric model of the earth is that the, the the sun is far larger than all of the other planets and that the other planets are circling around or rotating around the sun and while the whole solar system is zooming through space at over a hundred thousand kilometers per hour when the bible says the exact opposite that the earth is still that it is not moving all right and that the sun rotates over the earth and it is smaller than the earth however that's that that topic was covered in in um alien deception part one and two please go check that out so you can understand what the bible says about creation the reason they want you to believe that the earth is just an insignificant globe traveling around the sun is because there is an alien invasion coming and they want a deception that is coming uh, uh, the other planets and yeah. these beings are coming from the they other they want planets. you to believe that satan is coming that that satan they want you to believe that satan is actually alien beings they are coming from other planets those beings created us they have come back to give us solutions like the, the solution for cancer, the solution for the wars that we're fighting amongst each other. Meanwhile, those are the very beings that have given us the weapons, intercontinental ballistic missiles, ther thermonuclear missiles, submarine technology. All of this technology came from them. There's nothing that man knows just by himself. Man is taught and man becomes educated because he is taught. So who taught him this technology? Who taught him all of these things? Of course, the fallen ones. And all the names of these planets symbolize different gods. Yes. So Venus, Mars, yes. even Saturn himself. Saturn himself, Jupiter. So even the belief that there are other planets like Mars, like Jupiter, like Mercury, which are names of gods, even the belief that those planets exist is, a, is called heliocentrism. And if you believe that those planets exist and those are the names of those planets then you also submit and subscribe to heliocentrism so you have a combination of of bible christianity and heliocentrism and this is why we have such a watered down form of christianity it's because you believe a combination of the world and the word and this is common and this is and nowhere does this thrive more than in america yes. a combination there are churches that are free masonic temples but they're churches they're baptist churches most of the baptists in the south especially were freemason they were freemasons but they had churches they would hang black people by the neck but they would call themselves christians <laughs> all right so these this thing was common all it's common all throughout america if, if you look at many of the churches you'll see that the, the the freemasonic compass and square is right there on the foundation or the cornerstone of that church so when you see this symbol at a church, you should know I have no business there. This is a mixture of Christianity and Freemasonry, which Satan loves to dilute the potency of Christianity by mixing it with other things. Meaning it's if if we allow the enemy to dilute the gospel, yes. then people will not be filled with the Holy Spirit. It will be it will be just another another place where people gather and, and just entertain themselves, you know, have a good choir and, uh, you know, and have a very maybe an inspirational or motivational speaker come and just give a word of encouragement and tell you that you will travel nations, you build and you do all things. And then people will go back the same. The, the sin will not be spoken about. They will not condemn sin. Mm -hmm. they, 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 when you condemn sin, they say you're judgmental. Mm -hmm. When, uh, you know, everything is going to be watered down. Watered they, down become, gospel. The demons will be comfortable in the church. They will even be saying, oh, we are twerking for Jesus. Like you see, the, the way it is nowadays, they will oh, invite secular we have, artists. We have to show that. I couldn't believe T.D. Jakes would say such a thing. This is supposed to be a bishop. But you see the watering down of the gospel. Yes. It is big business in America. Oprah Winifrey, and the world. And Oprah Winifrey will give some uh, encouraging uh, message and then they will tell you that there are many ways to God and they will tell you not to feel bad about your sin. Uh, God is love and all that. Yes, we know God is love, but again, we know that there is a time, there is judgment day where we'll be accountable for everything that we do. And that's what they don't want people to know. They don't tell them that. And it's going to be, oh, buy this pastor a private jet so that he can travel from one one country to another uh, peacefully he doesn't want to interact with the demons that are in people it's the so-called people that have to buy him the private jet it's so confusing <laughs> on your birthday in the church's 14th anniversary we celebrate you my lovely wife celebrates you stand up honey 
Show him I did good. You're the finest grandmama I ever saw in my life. Five kids, nine grandkids, and still rocking it. She can still twerk for the Lord. Give God a praise. She can still twerk for the Lord. Give God a praise. Yeah, so you see, so heliocentrism, that that form of geography that comes from the Vatican, that form of creation, that story of creation that comes from the Vatican. Remember that the Gregorian cal- calendar comes from the Vatican, yeah. comes from the papacy, the, the Pope, the, the Catholic Church, and their influence over the world right now is, is ongoing. The Roman Empire has not collapsed yet it has not yet been destroyed remember it's the last of the empires that we saw we saw the persian empire we saw the greek empire and now we see the roman empire the roman empire as as daniel saw it in the in the in the various empires that are going to be destroyed and then what did he see he saw a he saw a statue whose top was gold and then he then the the torso was silver then the legs were made of of uh, clay and iron all right and then he gave us the interpretation of what that meant that the upper level was that persia that medio medo persians that that ruled the world during their time and then that one collapsed that empire collapsed god judged it and then a new empire arose which was the greek empire and then you see how greek ruled the world and alexander the great conquered the known world you know and then after the greek empire came the roman empire which was powerful now jesus arrived during the The roman Roman empire Empire. remember so we're looking at the various stages of humanity and now we're at the final stage with the roman empire where a stone that was cut without hands comes and strikes the feet of the roman empire which was made of of iron and clay and crushes it and the whole thing collapses and what happens to that stone the stone that the builders rejected the kingdom of god comes all right so yeah so now this is we're looking at the final stage but this roman church has given you a heliocentric or sun is in the middle and the earth is traveling around the sun that heliocentric model is a satanic is it's called it's it, it is a form of luciferianism it is a luciferian belief even the names of the days are named, as we explained, they're named after God. Sunday was the day they worshipped the sun. Monday was the day they worshipped the moon. Tiu is a goddess. The, the goddess Tiu, T-Y-U, please look that up. We're we, not making we this up. We it in, in the previous uh, yes. uh, signs and symbols yes. documentary. You can sh- watch A and B. We showed, you that, a and B. we showed you that Tiu was the name of a goddess. And that, that was the Tiu's day, was the day that Tiu was worshipped. Wednesday was Woden's day or Odin's day. Thor's day, Thor, the god Thor, the god. So, and Freya's day was Friday. And then Saturn day was the day they worshipped Saturn, the planet Saturn. So every day was named after a god. So even when we went to school, they were already programming us to worship the gods. And yet school was supposed to be normal, was supposed to be was supposed to be free from any form of religious dogma. Right. It's just supposed to be school. It's just supposed to be standardized education whereby a Catholic or a pagan or an atheist can all go to school and learn a common education that has that is free from any form of religion. Yeah. But that turned out to be a lie because we're being taught the names of gods in (laughs) after the days. So that means that. Even though they're claiming that they're neutral, they weren't neutral. It was a religious teaching. It was a re- we were being indoctrinated from the days of our schooling. We, yeah. And that's why we came up. And that's why it's so difficult right now to teach the average American Christianity and get him to accept it. Because he's already a heliocentric Catholic combined with mystical gods of Greece and Rome. He's already completely spiritually confused. This explains why many children who come from Christian families and their parents invest so much in their education. I'm not saying that don't invest in your children's education. When they graduate and they, 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 the more they 
they the more they go to school the more they get a masters the phd the whatever the, the more they get confused the doctorate the more they get confused and most of them end up becoming atheists yes. you send your child to university your child was very born again then when they come back after those degrees they are knowledgeable about the things of the world but they are not knowledgeable about the kingdom of god oh, and if, they become atheists if you're sending your ch- children to a to a college or a university that is not a god centered college university you are sending them to learn greek philosophy your the their professors will teach them greek philosophy they will make they will uh, deride christ they will deride christianity and every form of uh, christian teaching that they've been taught will be sucked out of them and you will get back a pagan idolater so you need to know that if you're sending your graduate. children yeah they will graduate into paganism they will come through the greek fraternities uh, he's a if, doctor but he drinks yeah you drinks see the, so much you see that you see these greek fraternities i told you this this greek way of thinking this greek ideologies and philosophies of idolatry it came from semiramis nimrod and tammuz babylon all of, the world today is pack, is practicing Babylonian Talmudism is practicing Babylonian mystery religions of devil worship. That is what the world that's what's going on right now. It started way back then in the book of Genesis when Nimrod began to become a mighty warrior. He built he was trying to build the city of uh Babylon, right? The the Tower of Babel and then God came down and mixed up the languages. So from that time because their languages were mixed up they could not continue with the construction of the tower of babel so instead of being able to con- communicate with each other through language because god mixed up their languages they began to communicate with each other through symbols and that is why we are exposing symbols because the babylonian religion that is practiced today worldwide communicates to one another not in english not in french not in german but through symbols hmm. Now you're making everything very plain and clear for parents to understand. You see, most of the people that are advocating for for things that are harmful to humanity are graduates. These are doctors. They have doctorate degrees. They they have gone to the best universities. But you may expect them to reason like, you know, like a normal person. These are the people who are advocating for LGBTQ rights. Uh, they are encouraging people to cut off their breasts and 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 change their sex and and turn into things that God did not design them to be. Because they've been programmed they are, they are, by the Babylonian pushing, mystery they religions. They're pushing for abortions. They they are pushing for for things that are destroying humanity they know very well the repercussions but they are spearheading it why you see the system it sucks god out of out of the human being you know it, it hardens the heart of man and they feel they are wiser than god the more you know it, teach your children not to worship these titles and material things and 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 the things that the world uh, considers to be as maybe uh, success you know let ground your children on the word of god train them the way they should go so that when they grow up they will not depart from the ways of god actually an, an education in christ is an education indeed yes if you do not have an education in christ you are not educated you are going to go forth into a world that is governed by spirits that are very detailed and and an unquantifiable amount of esoteric demonic knowledge that is influencing the lives of ordinary human beings they they're no match for those things they will be slaves in the kingdom of darkness you will be a slave you can be a slave on a phd level you can be a slave on a janitorial level where you're just cleaning the building you whatever the case may be without christ you will be a slave so it is jesus who sets us free he yeah. said he said he sent his word and healed us delivered us from our destructions he said you shall know the yeah. truth now the truth that you know this truth that we're discussing here it is this truth that sets the souls of men free, free. amen amen so let's go on to our next symbol two ball cane now two ball cane is a very freemasonic symbol What you're looking at is a cane and it has two spheres on either side of the cane. The first place we see two ball cane in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 4 verse 22. And the Bible says, "And Zilla, she also bare 
Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. Now, so the first person in biblical history to begin working with brass and with iron, his name was Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain was the, uh, uh, the seventh from the sixth or the seventh from Cain. Remember, after Cain killed his brother Abel, God judged Cain. Yes. The Bible says that God cursed Cain. Now, God did not curse Adam. God did not curse ordinary human beings, but he did curse Cain as judgment for killing his brother. And what is a curse? A curse is empowerment to fail, or a curse, more specifically, is the right for demonic beings to inhabit your temple. And what is your temple? Your body. It is the right. A curse is a legal right for demonic beings to influence you in every area of your life. All right. So working with iron and brass has taught was taught to humanity by the Benai Elohim, the fallen angels. What they taught them was called alchemy. It is the combination of magic and science put together. Tubal Cain is also a symbol of the male genitalia. What you're looking at is it just looks like an F, right? But it's not an F, it's, it's Tubal Cain. Now, this is how Freemasonry deceives. They'll put an F there and what it and and call it like, you know. I'll, in fact, I'll get to that, but Tubal Cain can be seen in the various, uh, can, you, can you see the various symbols here? We'll, we'll go ahead and zoom in on some of them. Um, but to, the Tubal Cain has the symbol of eternity, the infinity symbol. That yeah. is the horizontal eight. Tubal Cain ha is also a symbol of the male genitalia because the fallen beings also um, began to procreate with ordinary human beings. Yes. And the fallen also began to teach humanity how to create weapons. So you see that the, the first sword, the first weapons that can kill, it came from Tubal Cain. You see, when God cursed Cain, that curse traveled through the bloodline. We yep. do not see Cain repenting. We yeah. see Cain complaining that, oh, the curse that you've placed upon me is, is greater than I can bear. And now wherever I go, men will slay me. Then God said, therefore, whosoever shall slay Cain shall be slain sevenfold. And then God placed a mark on yeah. Cain. And what was that mark? I believe that mark was the hexagram. But anyway, he placed that mark on Cain so that whoever saw him would not kill him. However, there's still a curse upon him. And you know that curses are generational. Curses don't just disappear unless unless there is repentance. And we have no scriptural reference of Cain ever repenting. So we know that it traveled down through his bloodline. Now, if you look at Facebook, you're looking at the symbol of Tubal Cain. What did Tubal Cain teach. He began to, um, to he, he was a, a blacksmith. He began to combine magic and science. It was the fallen angels who began to teach him. And because that bloodline was cursed, the fallen angels could, could interact with them. Yep. Because already, if you're cursed, that means you're in the, you are under the, the, the domain of the kingdom of darkness. So they have a right to interact with you. So Satan and his fallen angels began to interact with the descendants of Cain. So they began to procreate. And the seventh generation from Cain, Tubal Cain, begins to invent weapons of war. Yes. And that's and, and how far have we come? Now we have submarines. Yes. Now we have intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now we have thermonuclear bombs, hydrogen bombs that can destroy the whole world. Where did that all originate from? Now we have social media. Now we have computers. Now we have curious workings of, of wires and microchips and central processing units and all this tech. Where did it all begin? It began from two volcano. And that's why you see the symbol of Facebook is that F is that is really they're they're trying to say that it's Facebook, but it's really two volcano who learned how to manipulate iron, who learned how to manipulate and combine magic and iron. 
and they keep asking what's on your mind so that you give them information about yourself where well, we can use facebook to preach we can use facebook for business but we have to know uh, how to set boundaries and then also don't allow your child to be on facebook a child a, a baby who cannot even discern that this is bad and this is right you're giving them tablets and the child is on facebook scrolling there is all sorts of garbage there and then there are some people also who follow us on facebook and you you're very 100% sure that this is not a normal or 100% human being it's either a machine that is following me or it's a dem- a demon you know there, there's so many things that are happening on social media the other thing you need to know is that children are selling their souls on 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 internet some children, there are some uh, facebook uh, pages where children are going and making research on how to sell their souls and they are selling their souls to the devil so there is so much activity the fact that you're using facebook as a parent to market your products and and maybe to brand yourself and do other things don't think that your child is also going to go there for the same for the same thing your child may be going there to sell his soul because it's it's a market it's 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 very open for any businessman and you now know the people they are representing you know if, if the sign is showing that they are representing the kingdom of darkness of course there are people who have markets where they are buying souls there are demons that are buying souls yeah so what shall it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul be careful parents you're buying data subscribing and your children are, are are being taken on social media so the two ball cane which is also the if you look on the uh the masonic exchange there's a website called the masonic exchange now if you look on the masonic exchange.com you'll see that there is a there is a uh, a uh, two ball cane symbol that is a circle that is very clearly exactly like facebook is it looks exactly the same as facebook so i'm not surprised that you know facebook is being utilized by the kingdom of darkness to gather information on people um and people are willfully giving their information Mm-hmm. And, and and placing it on facebook and they'll use that information again as that as information is already being used against you right now yeah and facebook is tracking your every move through other applications and through whatever website you go to gathering information on you supposedly for advertising purposes but that's not what it's for mm-hmm. it's really because they have a file and this is what edward snowden was exposing they have a file called prism and every human being that's ever been on the internet has a file and that file has all of your information in it the things you like the things you don't like and they're building that file based on information that you are updating to uh the internet now before facebook came out there was something called life log i saw you know the media the mainstream media is one of the greatest enemies of humanity because they gave you a storyline that facebook was actually created by some guy some high school oh some some um some university dropout by the name of Mark Zuckerberg they're saying that Zuck created this thing and and that it has nothing to do with government has nothing to do with spying but there's a reason why China has completely outlawed Facebook because they want to be the ones to spy on their own citizens <laughs> all right they don't want another government spying on their citizens now you have to hear this story about DARPA life log DARPA DARPA is Defense Research Projects Agency. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Now DARPA is one of the greatest enemies of humanity because remember when we exposed when remember we were showing the symbol for the Illuminati, the pyramid. Yeah. DARPA used to be called ARPA. they added the d later on it was advanced research projects agency then they added the d later on and made it defense research projects agency arpa actually invented the net the internet it used to be called the arpa net the internet used to be called the arpa net all right then there's enough proof because if you look at the If you look at the symbol of the W, you see before every website there's www. So if you look at the numerical value for W, 
you'll see that it's six. It's just like it has the W and then it has another letter. It has a, another uh, symbol there called Vav, which and the numerical value for W and the numerical value for Vav is six. So when you're looking at WWW, you would think you're looking at World Wide Web, but the numerical value in the Hebrew is six, six, six. So before every website, you can see six, six, six and then the, the location of that website. So DARPA defense research projects defense advanced research projects agency started a project called life log l-i-f-e-l-o-g life log was a project of the information broadcasting no information processing techniques office of the defense advanced research projects agency darpa of the united states department of defense this is dod you see, this is what you see. What I'm telling you that the internet started as a Department of Defense project. This is not something, and and DARPA was is is an is an Illuminati project. But I'll explain further. According to its bid solicitation pamphlet in 2003, it was to be an ontology-based subsystem that captures, stores, and makes accessible the flow of one person's experience in and inter interactions with the world in order to support a broad spectrum of associates assistance and other system capabilities the objective of the life log concept was to be able to trace the threads of an individual's life in terms of events states and relationships and it was the ability it has the ability to take in all of a subject's experience from phone numbers dialed and email messages viewed to every breath taken step made and place gone in other words life log was like this it was like this camera gadget that was that that you were supposed to wear around your neck and everybody was going to get one and that thing would just record everything you're doing 24 7 365 and it was a project that was that was uh supposed to come out in 2003 guess what in the defense research projects agency project life log failed in 2003 but just a few months later guess which social media platform launched facebook Facebook where they keep asking us what is on our mind and what we are about to do and what we are not about to do you know people are always posting everything oh I'm at CJ's oh I'm here uh, we are going to this place we are about to do this you know you post everything and that's how they get information so Facebook was really supposed to be this life log project where you're supposed to wear a camera supervising your every move, everything you do 24-7, 365 around your neck. But that project failed. I guess it wasn't just it wasn't practical. And you know how the false prophets are getting information about people and, and prophesying about their lives? They go on some of them go on Facebook. <laughs> they go on Facebook. The yes. governments, if they want to arrest you, they'll go on they'll put that name on Facebook and, and find out what they can find out about you. Oh yeah. Go on internet. Police are, are arresting a lot of people in the States. A guy will, will go and commit a murder and then post it on Facebook and say, Yeah, I just shot a guy with this. You know what I mean? I, I laid him down with this. You know what I mean? And and <laughs> <laughs> the, the detective just has to go on Facebook and see what he did. I mean, it's just, man, eating too many Oreo cookies. <laughs> so the Defense Research Projects Agency Project LifeLog failed in 2003. And just a few months later, Facebook was launched. Now, Facebook originally launched as The Facebook on February 4th, 2004, before changing its name to simply Facebook in August of 2005. Now, I want to show you where else we have seen Tubal Cain? Where else have we seen this Yeah, this symbol? There was a man by the name of John D. who lived from 13th of July, 1527 to around 1608 or 1609. He was an English mathematician, an astronomer, an astrologer. And now you know an astrologer are those idolaters who worship the host of heaven. And we see Paul complaining that they worshiped the created instead of the creator. They were worshiping the host of heaven, using astrology to foresee the future and dealing with demons, etc., etc. So he was an astrologer, a teacher, and an occultist. 
and an alchemist. I told you alchemy is the, a, a, a form of sorcery attempting to turn one thing into the other to make profit, to, to empower yourself through other means other than the, the word of God. He was the court astronomer for and advisor to Queen Elizabeth I and spent much of his time on alchemy and divination and hermetic philosophy. As an antiquarian, an antiquarian is just somebody who stores a lot of books and collects books and co collects ancient books and ancient writings. So as, as an antiquarian, he had one of the largest libraries in England at the time. As a political advisor, he advocated the foundation of English colonies in the New World to form a British Empire, a term he is credited with coining. Dee eventually left Elizabeth's service and went on a quest for additional knowledge in the deeper realms of the occult and the supernatural. He aligned himself with several individuals who may have been charlatans and traveled through Europe and was accused of spying for the English crown. He was a spy. John D was a spy and he was a spy in the service of Queen Elizabeth the first and he was involved in the foundation of the English colonies of the new world also known as America. All right now upon his return to England he found his home and library vandalized. He eventually returned to the Queen's service but was turned away when he was succeeded when she was succeeded by James. It is this James that you hear about King James version is James that that translated um, the Bible to to the, the the version that we have now. And the, this the, this the, uh, the LGBTQ right now has a another Bible. It's called the Queen Queen James version. Queen James version. Yeah, that's evil. So um, this was John D. John D. was a spy for Queen Elizabeth the first. All right, now. Of course, he was an alchemist. He was an occultist. He was all of these things, and he and he was very educated in wizardry and witchcraft and sorcery. So he would give counsel to the Queen of England. Now, while at the University of Louvain in the Netherlands, John Dee studied the occult. This was not uncommon for the era's intelligentsia, for whom science and magic were part of the quest to understand God. In other words, in those days, everybody who was anybody intellectual was trying to study science and magic and the combination of the two. So there was a storm in the Spanish and this is when John Dee became a big deal to Queen Elizabeth. When Elizabeth I took the English throne, she consulted John Dee on a regular basis. He even chose her coronation date. It was said that he cast a spell on the Spanish Armada, which was the Spanish naval fleet, in 1588, which sent huge waves crashing down on their ships. Although a more likely explanation is that because he knew about meteorology, he was able to anticipate the storm. When the Spanish ships approached England, Dee suggested waiting, correctly predicting that the Spanish fleet would be severely hit by the storms. So it would be the best, it would be best to keep the English ships at bay. Most of the Spanish ships were lost or damaged, and when the storm subsided, the English ships disposed of the rest. It was Dee's greatest moment. All right. So as a result of that advice, he basically John D told the, the entire English fleet to wait, don't go out to sea. And the Spanish fleet came just at a time when the when the violent storms sent waves crashing into their ships and destroyed the vast majority of the Spanish fleet. And basically that day, England won the war, won the war at sea. So this you know, obviously he won a lot of points with the Queen of England. So um, Elizabeth knew that D could do more for her and the whole nation. The queen needed a spy who could gather information about her enemies and the well-traveled loyal D was her man. He used his position as a scientific and astro astrological advisor to accumulate the largest library in England at his house in Mortlake boasting some 2,670 manuscripts as opposed to Cambridge's 451 and Oxford's 379, and to build a network of scientists, intellectuals, and courtiers through, throughout Europe, which he likely used for intelligence gathering. All right. 
you see the kind of job that he was given by by the queen mm. he she needed a spy and he became that spy now this is about to all come together wait this guy john d is he's about to come together and you can see that there's a very wealthy man in america who was named after john d but we'll get to that now d signed his letters to elizabeth as guess what zero zero seven or double oh seven have you ever heard of double oh seven 007 is this huge is Bond, James Bond. Have you ever heard of James Bond? Like that's a world famous uh movie movie series. James Bond who's, who plays as a spy. Well, he signed his letters to Elizabeth as 007. And if you look at the two ball cane, isn't that 0 and a 0 and a 7? Seven? Seven. Yes. Wow. So the two circles symbolized the eyes of Queen Elizabeth for your eyes only. And one of the episodes, one of the movies of 007 is James Bond for your eyes only. Wow. And seven was the alchemist's lucky number. D played an essential role in what one day, in what would one day become the British intelligence service both the real and fictional version centuries later his sign off would be picked up by james bond creator ian fleming so you see when you're watching this movie you don't know what 007 is 007 is two balkane and that's why when you watch the james bond movie you're you're seeing somebody who's always inventing new tools and he's using these tools to spy on other nations oh. <laughs> so when you're looking at 007 you're looking at two balkane but you'll never make that connection unless unless you study to show yourself approved a, unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So 007 or 007 is Tubal Cain, the cunning artificer and alchemist. Remember, Tubal Cain was the seventh from Cain. Hmm. The fallen ones taught him how to create curious weapons out of iron, how to become a blacksmith. Yep. This is why you see 007 using very sophisticated technology to spy on the enemies of the British crown in all of the James Bond movies. They put these things in our faces to make a mockery of the children of God and to blaspheme God. But all of their efforts will come to nothing. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 22, the Bible says, But the wicked shall be cut off from the land, and they that deal treacherously shall be rooted out of it. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 30 says, The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Now, it's in uh, Genesis chapter 4 verse 22 where we first heard about Tubal Cain. Bible says, And Zillah also, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naema. So, whenever we see the two balls and a cane, what we are looking at is the symbol of the direct descendant of Cain who killed his brother Abel. The descendants of Cain began to intermarry with the fallen angels to produce hybrid beings called the Nephilim. These fallen angels taught them how to make weapons of war, weapons of iron like swords and spears and javelins, and even the very high-tech weapons like microprocessors, central processing units, transistors, and the microscopic semiconductors used in today's microchips, which are used to manufacture intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads, which can even be deployed from submarines. Microchips are used in every computer, cell phone or electronic device weapons like the atomic bomb and thermonuclear bombs that can destroy the entire world were given to these children of cain and they're continuing on with the with the mission of cain sure. they have never repented and i don't think they ever will of course the high-tech weapons came later but the door was opened through Tubal Cain and the education he received from the fallen ones, which is a combination of science and sorcery, is what the Freemasons teach the initiated members of the Lodge. This is just a part of what the German engineers who were captured by the U.S. government through their intelligence operations during World War I and World War, World War II or, sim or simply escaped from Nazi Germany gave to the United States government. These German engineers were deep in the occult. Through these satanic rituals and Masonic interactions with fallen angels, these engineers received information that taught them how to create weapons of mass destruction. 
J. Robert Oppenheimer, who was called the father of the atomic bomb, was one of these men through whom this great evil was able to enter into our world. Remember that men are the gates of this world. Only through men can demonic devices enter into our world and wreak havoc. Everything we know as human beings we are taught. Remember that the Bible forewarned us about how knowledge would increase. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, he says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. True. Does this it? Is, yeah. This is making sense because you, you mentioned that they married with uh with fallen angels yes. and they had hybrid and jesus you see in the bible john the baptist identifying them you children of of serpents and jesus is also doing the same in the bible he's also identifying them john chapter 8 uh, yes. yes and he's he's mentioning you know who they are publicly not even hiding and um uh, wow it's it's just adding you know there are some people no matter how you preach the gospel they will not accept Jesus because they belong to their father, Satan. Jesus says, if he speaks lies, that's his language. So there are those people who are children of Satan, not because they have fallen uh, and turned uh, short of the glory of God because they have sinned. No, there is grace for a sinner to repent. But there are those who have mixed their DNA with the fallen angels and they cannot inherit the kingdom of God, no matter how we preach, no matter how good everybody turns, they will always be evil. Yes. Wow. So it should be understood that human beings are taught knowledge. That is the purpose of schools. If knowledge increases, that means that it must be coming from somewhere. And now we know it's coming from human interaction with the fallen ones, which ultimately traces back to Tubal Cain, who was the seventh generation from Cain who murdered his brother Abel. As a direct consequence of that brutal and barbaric act, God cursed Cain in the, in the fourth chapter of Genesis from verse 10 to verse 14. He said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that finds me shall slay me. You see, the Lord is judging Cain for killing his brother Abel. But even during that conversation, Abel, I mean, Cain is not repentant. He's just thinking about himself. He's saying, now wherever I go, the end, my people will see me and want to kill me or people will want to destroy me, me, me. He said, they shall slay me. It's about he, him. Is this about him? Cain is not even thinking about his dead brother. You there know, are such, you know we, there are such siblings in families. They don't think about, they don't think about their other siblings. It's about them. Me, me, I, I want this. Me, you know, they're not happy when their siblings are rising. Let me tell you, there are a lot of, there are a lot of families out there that have canes in their families. I know about that. I understand that fully. There are canes out there in the family. All right. So curses are generational. Curses are the pathways through which evil spirits can access human beings and perform their enterprise. Those evil spirits include, but are not limited to, fallen angels and demons. In order to even contact a fallen angel, you must be covenanted with the king kingdom of darkness. This is because evil spirits operate under cover of darkness. And that darkness being the absence of the light of God, away from the face of God. Remember what Cain said? He said, now I shall be away from the face of God. Look, look what, let's just read it word for word for word. He said, a, f a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the f thy face shall I be hid. He said, from the face of God shall I be hid. So this is one of the curses. These are the, the things that you can find common in the bloodline of Cain. 
from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that finds me shall slay me. That's when the Lord says, okay, therefore whosoever shall slay Cain shall be slain sevenfold. And then God puts a mark on him to protect him. So, in order to enter into that world, you must be initiated. And that initiation is a covenanting process, which also requires the recital of incantations, ritual, and the shedding of blood. The greater the power of the evil spirit, the greater the sacrifice required to energize the operation. Blood sacrifice is required to initiate the interaction and blood sacrifice is required to sustain the power of that covenant. Cain pioneered the way of the human sacrifice and was the first to provide the blood of innocence. The place where Abel was slain is also the place where his blood flowed into the ground. That place became an altar for the kingdom of darkness and it was at that altar that the blood of Abel cried out to God for justice. Ever since then, the kingdom of darkness has had an insatiable thirst for human blood. Through that altar, demons were able to enter into the earth and perform their enterprise through Cain. And we have no report of Cain ever repenting for killing his brother. Instead, Cain only thought of himself and how anyone who saw him would kill him. Look in verse Genesis chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that finds me shall slay me. See, Cain, me, 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 I, me, me, I. That's how mankind is. Some Until siblings are like that. Until the Lord changes you, you'll be me, 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 I, I, I. So when God cursed Cain, it meant that demonic spirits were now free to perform their enterprise upon Cain and through his bloodline. Cain's descendants were now covenanted unto the kingdom of darkness. Now Lamech was the fifth generation of Cain's descendants, but the spirit of murder could still be seen in Cain's bloodline. And if you find uh, Genesis chapter 4 in the 23rd verse, Lamech speaks and he says, Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So you see, Lamech was a murderer, he killed also, so this, this murderous thing is going through the bloodline. So where you see wars, where you see endless wars, and and plundering of nations to steal their oil and ongoing this is this is it's non-stop it is relentless because the kingdom of darkness demands blood and Cain's bloodline is going to give it to them so the covenanted ones will regularly be deployed on missions for blood harvesting the greatest blood harvesting system is war others include but are not limited to crime car accidents sickness and disease pandemics natural or supernatural disasters depending on how spiritually mature you are etc so the, the children of cain and those who are covenanted to the powers of darkness who may also be descendants of seth by an act of their own will provide an economy of blood for the powers of darkness at the expense of humanity and on an industrial scale yeah yeah this explains why they fund the government and the opposition Mm -hmm. because when the opposition is funded and they feel they can fight the government, yes, they will go for war, and then it's the people to die. It's, it's the population to suffer. Yes. And then they will boost it by promoting it on their platforms, on, on those big media platforms. And, uh, oh, oh, my God. Then they all come in like they are peacekeeping agencies or organizations, and yet they are coming to also steal Yes, they're expert at creating problems and then appearing as if they are the ones that are providing the solutions when, in fact, they are the ones who created the problem. Well, so, how can uh, that queen control 
most of the African continents, like countries, mm-hmm. let's say she's, she's the same person that is governing Kenya, governing uh, Uganda, governing Tanzania, one person, and she's the one who decides which pa- which president goes into power and which one steps down, and she's funding the opposition and funding the government, and we are being deceived that we got independence with a certificate, and we cannot... <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that you're making sense. It's, it's the it's the it's the Cain Cain system. Me 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 me. Mm-hmm. Extreme selfishness. They get the the mineral resources from from the African continent and impoverish it, and they say that Africa is broke, but they don't want to get out of Africa. They are stuck in Africa. Ah. So, they require blood. The kingdom of darkness requires blood. And this is because the life force is contained in the blood. And the kingdom of darkness needs this life force in order to survive. It is a brutal ongoing war. In Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 we read that, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. So evil spirits need this life force in order to function here because God the Father does not give them energy. We know that God does not feed them or give them energy because in Matthew 12 verse 25, Jesus says, um, he, Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So is God the Father providing the kingdom of darkness with energy with food with sustenance no way no because a kingdom divided against itself will fall so where do they get it from they get it from man and, feeding on man and satan has his own children he has his bloodline through the bloodline of cain the and bloodline so, that creates cancer and come up with a remedy that is not even providing a real solution but to just make people sell everything that they have mm-hmm. uh, and and give it to them and end up dying yes Moving on to our next logo. Check this out. Gmail. Hmm. 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 Gmail. This is making sense. Oh Gmail my God. is also the Masonic Royal Rich Apron. You'll find that all of these big corporations, they're affiliated with Freemasonry. Yes. Yes. So Masonic Royal Rich Apron. That's the symbol for Gmail. And as you can see here, here's a Freemason with his uh, Freemasonic apron. apron wearing around his waist. As you can see, another Freemasonic apron here. And it just has a pyramid that just looks like an arrow pointing upward without the stem in the middle. You are going to see this symbol again where a, an arrow is just pointing up in the form of a pyramid. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you towards the end of this. But Gmail is it's the, it's the same uh, symbol as the mis, as the Mason's apron. So it needs to be understood that all of our communication through email is the being recorded monitored. and is being stored. It is being gathered. It is being processed and it is being stored. And there is a file on everyone who has ever uploaded anything to the Internet having signed in after they've signed in. So you are being spied on thoroughly. No wonder they need all that information, date of birth, Mm -hmm. everything. They're spying on you and we are paying to be spied on. Everything we're putting out onto the Internet Everything, every website you've ever searched, everything, there's a file on that. They are gathering that information and they will use it against you. You are dealing with beings that are very intelligent. You're not dealing with ordinary beings here. So we're not saying that it is a sin to use Gmail or any of these products. We just want you to know how much influence the devil has over this world. Only Jesus has greater power than this. Now... If you see that these machines, this technology is being utilized for you and against you simultaneously. Helps you in creating a convenient system of communication, but at the same time it is gathering evidence against you. It is gathering knowledge. It is is compiling a file with your name on it so that they can categorize you and give you uh, points uh, in, in in this social construct that is coming. Every man will have a, uh, a file on them and in that file they'll be able to categorize you either you're for the new world order or you are against it and they're gathering that evidence right now with everything you are uploading to the internet check out google play 
Have you seen the Google Play logo? Here it is. This Google Play logo is also the seal of, of Satan or the sigil of Satan. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Look at the sigil of Satan. And now look at Google Play. Wow. And you can see how the two are the exact same. Yeah. So they did this deliberately. They did not do this by accident. They know what they're doing. Google, Facebook, all of these big, uh, these, these internet giant companies, these are Freemasonic companies. And Satan, through Tubal Cain, gave them this knowledge. And this, it is this knowledge that they are utilizing to do both good and evil. All right. That was the tree. This is the result of Adam partaking of that tree. Everything you see here is a result of partaking of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. which impacted Adam and Eve sexually because, first of all, how did God punish Eve? Through her procreation. Mm -hmm. In great travail, she will bring forth children. And he punished Adam that he would have to labor through the sweat of his brow in order to provide for his wife and for his children. All right. So that Google Play is the, is the sigil of Satan. But check out the Apple Store also. You know, the most sad uh, bit of it is that uh, a person, some people cannot survive without Internet. Some people cannot survive when their phones are off they feel like something has something wrong has has really happened they are so addicted to it i know right families have broken parents don't have time for their children because of internet the, the children are trying to interact with their parents but their parents are on phones there's no family time anymore everybody's on on phone this one is on whatsapp the other one is on facebook the other one is on google the other one is on the on the gmail everybody's very busy in their own world but that is the strategy of the enemy right so can you imagine you just turn off all your gadgets for one day and and have a and have some <laughs> see, time as a family. See, no no no. I'm just saying. Just try it. You'll see uh -huh. that it, they have a very powerful pool. Okay. Yeah. So the the you can see the Masonic compass and square on the Apple App Store. That the the logo for the App Store. You can see the Android product store mm -hmm. is also a Masonic compass. Mm -hmm. And that is the Freemasons logo, the compass and the square which are builder's tools. When a builder, when, a, when an architect is drawing up the plans or the blueprint for uh, something that, the, an edifice that they want to build, they will use the compass, they'll use the square, they'll use a ruler. So the Freemasons logo is a compass and a square. These are builder's tools. The Mason is essentially a builder, but what is he building? The Mason is building a world where Lucifer rules over all. That's what the 33rd degree know. The lower levels of Freemasonry, they don't know that. They just believe that they are a fraternal brotherhood doing philanthropy, going around doing good and becoming better men. Like I, I was a member of uh, the Interact Club. I didn't know this. By then, I was so naive. I hadn't yet found out the secrets of, of the Interact Club, the Rotary Club. And they these people pose as if they, they do charity. But deep inside, later, I discovered it. it's a cult. It's a satanic cult. And uh, they support one another. It's a brotherhood. They support each other. And they parade as if they are doing charity. They are good people. But they are not good people at all. Yeah, so in Acts chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. You see, the Freemasons are builders, right? They're using builders tools. They're using a combination of the information and the education they were given through Tubal Cain, through the fallen ones. And they think that they have the upper hand because Satan gives them knowledge, occult knowledge, which they can use against humanity to have the upper hand, to have 
power and money. But that's why Jesus asked, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? So they're gaining all of these things, but it's just temporary gain because all this whole world is going to pass away. It's going to be destroyed and the Lord is going to start from scratch. And anything that is not in Christ is going to be destroyed. So Peter preached to the to those people when the Holy Ghost first came and he said, This is the stone which was set at naught or set at the side of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Wow. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's Acts chapter 4 from verse 10. 10 to verse uh to verse 12 glory to god so you see and and the lord had called peter petrus mm. upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and what are the gates the places where the gates is like the parliament the place where decisions are made the strategy is formulated and the most surprising thing about this is that when they are using the white magic they use the same symbol the compass and the square mm -hmm. and uh, they cause objects to move and they know where they communicate with spirits a spirit can break a glass a spirit they they they, they do so much they use cards mm -hmm. you know those play cards uh, with joker and you know all those signs eh? mm -hmm. uh, when they are using white magic and now explaining all this and uh, looking at the symbols that these companies have these companies are using white magic yes so the freemason builds by combining sorcery with his trade whatever business he's in he will combine that business with sorcery so there is witchcraft in his business this witchcraft gives his business an advantage over ordinary citizens who have no spiritual knowledge and are otherwise referred to as the uninitiated in revelation chapter 18 it announces the end of this satanic system of witchcraft and oppression while revealing the true source of the rich and powerful people's wealth it was sorcery that gave him that wealth and it is sorcery that is being practiced in freemasonry in revelation chapter 18 verse 23 the bible says speaking of the end of this age when these freemasonic systems and these governments and these businesses and these banking systems will all be destroyed the bible says and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived so their merchants what is a merchant a businessman we know that the merchant is a businessman but wait if you break down the word merchant, as we have done before, we see that it's a myrrh, which is the same word which pertains to water. A myrrh maid or a myrrh man, man is a water maid or a water man. But marine here is a, kingdom. yes, pertaining to the marine kingdom. But here is a myrrh chant, a water chant, meaning that he enchants, meaning that he, he, he involves his business, his trade with sorcery. And which area of the kingdom of darkness pertains to money? The marine kingdom. True. That's why these financial terminologies have these marine kingdom names. Cash flow. Sail. Like a like a boat sails, right? You see the 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 the, cur the river flows um, Float. along the line of current uh, of the river bank. Currency. The bank guides the the flow of the river, the currency, the river bank. The bank controls the flow. Okay, there's the, and the Bible says that for you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its leaf in its season. Your leaf also that brings forth his fruit in his season. Your leaf also will not wither and whatsoever you do shall, shall. prosper. Talking he said you bank. shall be, he shall, you shall be like a tree planted by the side of the river so you'll be planted on top of the bank because if not the bank will be planted on top of you yes in other words 
Wow, so so Psalms chapter 1 makes sense. Blessed is the man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also will not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper see that's that's wow. god's way yeah. so the word of god is making perfect sense before you even leave the topic of the bank uh recently the world bank denied uh uganda access to to loans because museveni turned down the uh, lgbtq you know he because of the whatever he passed mm -hmm. against the the law he passed again he signed against the lgbtq community so mm -hmm. the world bank denied uh, Ugandan government access. Which is hypocrisy because yes. <sighs> these are the same American organizations or uh, you know that are these bodies are still doing business with Saudi Arabia, with Qatar and they're doing business in the trillions of dollars with these companies, yeah. with these countries I mean. And yet Saudi Arabia will behead you if you are found doing any kind of homosexual uh, activity. And Qatar too, they have very fierce, very steep uh, laws against homosexuality. Yet America does big business with Saudi Arabia, yeah. does big business with these Arab countries. But yet they will condemn uh, Uganda Saudi. yeah, and deny them this uh, IMF debt with debt trap money that's what it's really debt trap money they're just trying to entrap Museven you seven also debt. say that uh, actually the, the the learning is the problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's better listen if you keep on giving somebody money every day is that person really going to pick up their pick pick themselves up by the bootstrap and start working no, no way he's used to being given a handout he's not going to develop He's not going to do anything. So really, the IMF is our enemy. Furthermore, the Bible says that the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. So if the IMF and the World Bank are lending to your governments, that means that your government is not the servant of the people because the people are not lending money to the government. It's the IMF and the World Bank. And the Bible says the borrower is the servant of to the lender. Yeah. So if they are lending to your government, that means your government works for them, not for you. Yes. So it is important that we stop borrowing from these Luciferian organizations, these Freemasons in in high political uh, in in high positions of uh, finance around the world, who manipulate the world, who who have carved up the world for themselves and want to take control of the entire world through using technology is through this technology that they're going to control the whole world they can't do it now because it whenever you see cash you should you should be very happy because that means there's a certain level of freedom yes <laughs> when cash is eliminated checkmate your freedom is completely taken away when cash is completely eliminated your freedom is gone and that's what they're heading towards that's why you're hearing Cashless society. Cashless society. Let's go cashless. I don't want to go cashless. I want cash to remain in the system because as long as there's cash, it does. It means that you can trade. Yeah, you can trade, and it means that the king. It means that they are not supervising every transaction you make, every single last transaction. Whoever is paid, whoever paid you, they have. To, they want to know everything, and they want to tax everything. And they want to collect data on everything and they want to dictate where you can spend and how much you can spend and who you can spend with and who you're allowed to receive money from. And if you have a low social credit score, that means you posted something on Twitter that was against the government. They didn't like that. They can take away your money or they can decide how much you can use and your money can expire at a certain date if you don't if you don't spend it by a certain time. I mean, total listen what is coming is total control is total dystopian technological dictatorship control is complete oppression that's what's coming and people are just buying into it and that's the sad part but so the by thy sorceries were all nations deceived all of these things we're participating in all of this technology it's been handed down to us and it, it is a combination of sorcery and man's greed because man wants more.
can you imagine the guy who the guy who invented this uh who introduced apple computers his name was steve jobs in fact we'll get to him but he is he's the one who introduced the iphone but where did it come from where did it really come from this is knowledge that is being handed down to us through spirits and you see how he died he died before his time how young was he when he died you see how you see how his body was consumed because when you do business with these spirits they don't let you just die of old age no way they give you the world and then they, they take feed, your soul they, they come to collect on you. they feed on you yes so they feed you and feed on you yeah so by thy sorceries were all nations deceived so what is going on in the nations right now all nations are being deceived by sorcery that's why if you don't have jesus your life is being influenced and controlled manipulated by sorcery in ways that you can't even control sorcery causing riots in your nation sorcery causing the the market to fluctuate sorcery manipulating the stock market sorcery manipulating the work the the, the market the the you know you're trying to make a living but as a result of certain things that are happening that are far beyond your control you can't provide for your children you saw the way sorcery was released and a pandemic hit the earth and nobody could go to work I mean, these are things that are far beyond your ability to control, okay? So that's why I'm saying without Jesus, you are a sitting duck in this world. I you believe are. it was supposed to be even worse than that, but because Christians are praying, yes. yeah, God had a way of just saving his people, but this that pandemic was supposed to be worse. People were supposed to die, exactly. especially here in Africa. That's what their plan was. You heard how you heard Melinda how Gates. Bill and Melinda Gates and Melinda Gates was acting as if she's so concerned for the Africans. She said, "I could just see Africans dying. They're going to be dead all over the streets, and we have to do something." As if they care. These are high-level Freemasons. These are Luciferians. They are talking claiming like, as if they care about, about the God's children. They don't care about God's children. They want to depopulate. They saw that that plan didn't work, but they learned a lot. They learned that they can force the public to wear masks and some will be foolish and some will be wise. And they learned how to, to, to tighten things down further. And it's going to get worse. So, you know, moving right along, if you look at the Google Chrome logo, it is an eye with an iris and it is 666. As you can see, it's, it's, it's called the Divine King logo symbol of the divine king and it is six 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 and you click on it every time you're you're going to open up google chrome you actually click on it you're so the system you're already in the system you're clicking on the system you are preferring the system you see how subtle satan is you see how subtle you see how methodical you see how much of a brilliant mind he has though a, a very brilliant mathematical mind he can give us tools that he can use to one day imprison us yeah, so most of the logos for the biggest companies around the world are filled with Masonic symbolism. Is it any wonder that employees usually hate their jobs and feel enslaved to the system, but cannot understand how to get out of the system which has enslaved them? Let's look at some more company logos with Freemasonic symbolism. Check out Delta Airlines. Can you see three pyramids on Delta Airlines? Yes. Those are Freemasonic symbols. That's an airline company. It was supposedly Delta Airlines that flew into the Twin Towers during 9-11. All right. Oh, if, I, if I'm not wrong, it might, it might have been another airline. Either way, it was an airline um, that they claimed flew into the Twin Towers. Now, 9-11, I think we'll need to break that down one day because if you believe... The mainstream media's narrative of 9/11, you're deceived. You are, and if you're a Christian, you're you're even worse deceived. If the mo the day you begin to question the mainstream media, you have you will have begun to 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 wake up. You'll have begin you'll have begun. Don't let people research for you. Research for yourself also. Mm -hmm. The three pyramids of Egypt line up under the constellation of Orion, but we know that the pyramids are altars. When you, when you actually went to hell, you saw Lucifer sitting, sitting on, a pyramid. on a pyramid. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 from verse 25 to verse 26, God is giving 
instructions on how his altar is to be built. And he says, And if you will make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of a hewn stone, meaning that you will not try to shape that stone with a hammer or with a tool. You will not build it of hewn stone, for if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. Neither shall you go up by steps unto mine altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. So you see, when building an altar unto the Lord, you're not supposed to build it with steps. These were the instructions that God was giving to the patriarchs. You're not, but if you look at the altar, the throne and altar of Lucifer, which is that pyramid, it has steps. And what is being and what is taking place? Their nakedness is discovered on that altar. All right. The kingdom of darkness does the exact opposite of the commandment of God. So if God has rejected altars which have stairs, then Satan's altars will have stairs. When Erica went to hell, she saw Satan seated on the top of a pyramid. Yes, and it had stairs. Yes. The pyramid is the throne and the altar of Satan. Now, there is a star called Sirius in the sky. They call it the North Star. It is the brightest star in the night sky. It is not far from the constellation of Orion. These are the first and second heavens where Satan has his kingdom in the air. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, we read about Satan's kingdom. It says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So the prince of the power of the air, he has his kingdom in the heavens. And that brightest star that is in the heavens called the North Star. There is an artist who sang about that star. She said star shoot. And then it's, it's, she also mentioned the fact that it shines bright and lights the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know, is it Taylor Swift? I don't know. Whenever, they, a, whenever you hear these secular artists talking about the stars, like Rihanna, signs, uh, your, your beautiful like, like diamonds in, in the sky, that all of that right there, that she's worshiping Lucifer. Yeah. The free the, the the music business is a Luciferian Freemasonic business. They are devil worshippers. Yes. And Rihanna said that because I'm a devil worshipper, she confessed. Yeah, she said it. You know, and she said it in a sarcastic way so that the fools will be taken and the wise will be separated from the fools. <laughs> All right, so Ephesians chapter 6, 12 also indicates that there are powers in the heavens. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So it is, the, it is those high places where we see the North Star or that star that is also called Sirius. Now in Job 38 verse 7, we also see enough. this. The, star, the children sing twinkle twinkle little star uh -huh. how i wonder what you, you are, are uh -huh. up above goodness uh, yeah so they've been training you since a child up above the world so high, high like a diamond, like a diamond in, the in the sky jesus christ you see and who are they they're teaching your children how to worship the devil yeah. from i mean just right from from these lullabies that you sing to children it, there's another one um called uh there's this other song where they are singing about the london bridge London and Bridge. and do you yeah down. yeah do you know what it's it's about a story of a of a naked lady she ran into the street and a crowd of men began to follow her and she kept on going and, and they went on to the uh this bridge and the whole crowd, the probably the whole city followed and they came into this bridge and the bridge collapsed and they died in their thousands. And the children so are now, singing that. So now that's why they're singing London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down, London Bridge is falling down. My fair lady. Jesus. You see, so see the, the world is the world is just you've been trained since your childhood to be wicked. All right, so no, instead of allowing our children to listen to those meaningless songs, let them learn to worship God from the beginning. If you're if you're not teaching your children scriptures, if they're not watching the word of God on their screen every day, they are being indoctrinated by the devil. They are guaranteed. listening to Baby Shark. Do, 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 guaranteed, do, 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 do. yes. Wow. So, 
The stars in the heavens are in fact the dwelling places of angels as the scripture describes. Job 38 verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, God was asking Job if he was there when the, the morning stars, stars sang for joy. There are many companies with stars in their logos. You see Sirius Satellite Radio? It's an American broadcasting company based in New York. Sirius Satellite Radio broadcasts um, through all over the world. But check out OnStar. They might not have heard of OnStar in, in Africa, but in America, OnStar is very common. It's a subsidiary of General Motors, which provides subscription-based communication services to customers who purchase their vehicles. So if you have a, a vehicle that you purchase from General Motors, you have that option of subscribing to OnStar. OnStar is like you can communicate to a customer service representative. They can book f f uh, 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 an appointment for you at a doctor's office or they can book an appointment for you at a restaurant and yeah, yeah you and just communicate through um, OnStar and they and they book that for you. So if you look at the symbol of OnStar, it's also Freemasonic. Jesus. It's everywhere. Look at this. On or Onu. You see OnStar? Okay. On was the name of the Egyptian city Heliopolis, which is a Greek rendering of that of that city called on egyptian lunu or onu pillar city and and as far as the bible it was called on on one of the most ancient egyptian cities and the seat of worship of the sun god ra it was the capital of the 15th name of the lower egypt but heliopolis was important as a religious rather than a political center so Heliopolis was a, a, a religious center. So On was the name of that city. Now Helios, the personified and deified form of the sun, was identified by the Greeks with the native Egyptian gods Ra and Atum, whose principal cult was located in the city. Today, one of the last remaining artifacts of that ancient city is the obelisk, which is, as we told you, the symbol of the male organ of the sun god Ra. It can be found in every major city in the world. We showed you this obelisk. We showed you this. It is in every city. I'm sure whichever city you live in, look around you, you can identify and find the obelisk. What are they saying? They worship the sun god Ra. These are the ancient Babylonian mystery religions of witchcraft and sorcery and pagan idolatry. So, On was the name of the city of Heliopolis, which represented the sun. According to the Masons, the bright sun is also, is always considered to be Sirius. That, now I'm not talking about Sirius as if it's a, it's a, it's a serious issue. I'm talking about S-I-R-I-U-S, Sirius, the, the northern star. So wherever you see the star, what you are looking at is Sirius, and it represents the brightest star in the cosmos, which is supposed to represent Lucifer. That's why when you draw the pentagram, when you draw this five-pointed star, you are actually drawing Sirius, or you are drawing the pentagram, you are drawing the, the North Star, which represents Lucifer. And if you look around you, you can find this logo in very many places. So you, whenever you're seeing a circle with a star inside of it, you are looking at the North Star Lucifer. And that coincides with that, lo that Egyptian location called On. That's why you see the logo for On Star. It has a circle and a star inside of it. That's the North Star for Lucifer. All right. So. It's also on the Hanna-Barbera Productions logo. It is a circle with a star inside of it. The North Star, Lucifer Star. Hanna-Barbera creates cartoons like Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo is full of fear and mysterious ghosts and anybody who's watched it, I mean, this is stuff that we grew up on as kids, as children. We didn't know that we were being indoctrinated by Lucifer, by OnStar, by the North Star, by Freemasons. 
These Freemasons have been hard at work. They have been working hard to create content that will indoctrinate children away from God towards Lucifer. And so by the time Lucifer worshiped, worship is introduced openly in the world, they will accept it because they've been programmed all this time and desensitized all this time. Another Hanna-Barbera um, cartoon is The Flintstones. <laughs> Who hasn't watched this? It's a cartoon about a family living in the Stone Age. Another Hanna-Barbera cartoon, The Jetsons. I mean, who didn't watch this stuff? Another Hanna-Barbera cartoon, Tom and Jerry. Who didn't watch Tom and Jerry? <laughs> Man, people are watching Tom and Jerry today. And children are rebellious, you know, when yes. they watch Tom and Jerry, they become so stubborn. Because the themes in those cartoons, they are designed to make a child rebellious. They are designed to make a child conniving and mischievous. They will not be obedient, they will be disobedient. They will not be humble, they will not be gentle children, they will be conniving and, and manipulating. All right, so, and a long list of other cartoons which shaped the minds and hearts of generations of children who are now adults and have little to no idea that life is spiritual and that their mentalities and worldviews have been carefully crafted by Freemasons in the kingdom of darkness for years. You might not be a Freemason, but your mentality was shaped by Freemasons and you are likely to agree with the Freemasons if your mind has not been renewed by the word of God. Hanna-Barbera's content promotes and conditions the mentality of the flesh, which is carnal or unspiritual, ungodly and selfish. So, and Romans explains that he says, for they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's why there is an epiphany that, that takes place when you realize that life is spiritual. When you realize that your life can change and you begin to see life from the spiritual perspective. And so now it's not that you don't want to sleep around because you think you're some kind of Holy Joe, but you don't want to do it because you're thinking of the spiritual ramifications of doing this thing. Hmm. Now you you're like, defile your body. now, first of all, to defile my body, first and foremost, to defile the intimacy with my God. Secondly, to defile the body. Thirdly, the generational curses that will be transferred from that person to me. Fourth, the problems that will arise as a result of these generational curses and these demons that now have legal access because I foolishly opened the door. You understand? Like this, there's, there's a long list of consequences that you are seeing and that is the, the spiritual perspective. That is being spiritually minded. That's why the Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be ignorant of these things is to be carnally minded. The carnal mind is at enmity with God. Because it doesn't see things from a spiritual perspective. It, see things, it just sees things from the physical perspective. It just says, ah, sex is pleasure. It just enjoys what there is that, that's, that is just totally physical. It does not take into account the spiritual ramifications. And so being cardinally minded is actually being stupid and ignorant. Now, Worldly content such as Hanna-Barbera conditions the, view, the viewers for a world where Lucifer rules over all. Have a look at Colombia. Was even Lucifer rebelled? Yes, yes. It's a rebellious spirit. Re Lucifer is rebellious. That's why your children, if they watch these cartoons, you try to tell them to do something, they are going to rebel. And parents cannot understand why their children are so rebellious because they're feeding them on Hanna-Barbera, you're feeding them on Walt Disney, you're feeding them on Columbia, you're feeding them on the gods of this world. So obviously they are going to behave just like those gods. Even before they can speak, they can understand. So the worldly content, Columbia, can you see that? You've seen that goddess at the beginning of movies. Can you see the sun shining from the hand of the goddess Columbia? And we'll, we'll just show you a few pictures of that so you can see that Columbia Pictures was the sun god. And who is the sun god? Ra, the north star, the sun god, Satan, 
the worship of the created instead of the creator. So can you see that the emerging sun looks like a shell from the beach? But Colombia is not the only one that has used this logo. It's like shell of, of the British Petroleum. Yeah. Which plunders indigenous countries for their oil while enriching themselves at the expense of those citizens. And the citizens of those countries go poor while shell enriches themselves. Can you see that what they call shell is actually the sun emerging and filling the earth with Lucifer's light? Yes. You see, like if you, if you just receive knowledge from this world, that sun is also a representation of simply the knowledge that you can get from any university, which is Greek philosophy. That's why if you are, if you, if you ever attended a, a, an American university, you know a little something about the divine nine or you know something about Greek sororities, fraternities that are Greek and the way that you're initiated into those sororities or those fraternities or those brotherhoods or sisterhoods is through a process called hazing where they literally initiate you by humiliating you and beating you down. And some people have even died during the initiation process of getting into a Greek fraternity. And they fight to get into these fraternities because they want to be, they want to be uh, involved. They want to be included. They seek acceptance. And people who graduate from these universities and continue through these, um, these occult fraternities, they don't know it's the occult. Or many times they don't know. God has delivered some of them, but they don't know that they are in the occult. And you'll see them posing. Some of them are, uh, 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 there are nine different uh, fraternities. In fact, let me, let me just look them up for you briefly. Hey, I know many parents are now uh, getting answers to their questions. You find a baby misbehaving, you know, and, and you're, you're wondering, what have I, where have I gone wrong? I provide everything for this child. I do see, like, like, this baby has everything. Why is my baby rebelling? One time, we, we, we were playing uh, some Christian uh, cartoons, and then there is this cartoon that just showed up, and they are telling the children to rebel. When mommy tells me to clean my plate, I will never. But, but I never, I never will. And the baby throwing food at the mom and throwing the plate. And immediately we switched to another Christian song. And you would really see that there is an, an impact it causes on children. You know, they are watching this and then you tell them, you go and clean the plate and they throw food at you. And you're wondering, why did they Yeah. So, this? So these are the, um, these, these divine nine are Greek sororities, the Greek letter, black Greek letter sororities, mostly for, uh, these are for blacks, black people. But uh, the National Pan-Hellenic Council is a collaborative umbrella council composed of historically African-American fraternities and sororities, which are brotherhoods, which are like secret societies, also referred to as black Greek letter organizations. Now, the founders are the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Incorporated. Then there's Delta Sigma Theta. Then there's Zeta Phi Beta. Then there's Kappa Alpha Psi. And there's Omega Psi Phi. There's, there's, if you, 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 you might not understand black American culture, especially amongst those who are educated or the higher ups in black culture in America, if you don't understand the divine nine. You don't understand Greek letter sororities. You don't understand what's going on there. Because if you don't, you won't, you won't understand why they're, what the boule is and how they influence who rises up in, in, in America amongst the black people and who doesn't. So um, these are the divine nine are nine different sororities. We don't, and you can look them up in your own time, but they are Greek letter sororities that I'm telling you that our world today is influenced by the empire of Greece and those philosophies that, that you know, that the Greeks um, held dear were passed on from Greece to Rome. Yeah. And now we are in the final Roman empire that is coming to an end. And so, um, yeah, th there are, there are people who are in these divine nine um, sororities and they're in key positions in, 
in uh, American politics and in entertainment and they're very influential, all right? And to be more specific, actually, you know, and I don't want to even really go into this topic that much, but Martin Luther King was one of these, was in one of these divine nine. And even uh, the vice president of the United States is in the Delta. It's it's called Delta Sigma Theta. Delta. You'll see her posing with the with the with the Delta like this. What is she yes. saying? She's part of the Divine Nine. She was she was in one of the sororities in her college years. That's when they initiate you, and from there you start, you know, you start moving up in the world, and that's why there's such a, a demand to get in, because. They want the advantages that people who belong to the divine nine get. They get certain. They get divine certain. Nine. Yes, Freemasonry, yes. Um, uh, skull and bones. All of these secret societies. The world is controlled by secret societies. It needs to be understood. It's controlled by, and governments are influenced by these very same secret societies. So, Can you see what that what they're calling shell is actually the sun emerging and filling the earth with Lucifer's light? Um, can you see it's it's all over the place. Look at the Chrysler logo. Chrysler is a vehicle um, that's really common in the U.S. Look at Texaco. Can you see the star, the North Star inside the circle? Yes. Inside on the city of on the religious center in Egypt. It's all sun god worship. It's all Babylonian sun god Nimrod worship. <laughs> Texaco is an oil company which operates similar to BP Shell, exploiting oil wherever they go. Look at Subaru. Subaru. If you look closely, you'll find on stars all over the corporate world. Subaru is the Japanese name for the Pleiades group of stars called M45 or the Seven Sisters. There are six stars in the Subaru logo, while the seventh is invisible, according to Japanese legend. The reason that Subaru took its name from this group of stars is to represent the companies that formed together to create Fuji Heavy Industries, or FHI, which manufactures Subaru. Um, I mean, this stuff is all over. Can you see the OnStar logo again in, um, in Starbucks? Yes. There's the circle and there's the star. It goes on and on. I mean, the, the mermaid. Yeah, and, the, and in in Starbucks, you can see this is a mermaid. If you looked at the old, the original symbol for Starbucks, it was a, it was a topless mermaid. Her breasts were exposed, and her legs are spread. This is the goddess. Immorality. This is an immoral goddess. This is the, when the Bible says, "For the rich men of the world." were her merchants for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived this is what it's talking about these are the these are the merchants of the these are the great men the great the the richest wealthiest merchants of the world this this company starbucks starbucks is um its market capitalization is in the billions of dollars it is ubiquitous in america it's everywhere so you can see the logo. You can see what they represent. This is a this is a this is a mermaid spirit. She on the, the, the on the top half she's a fallen naked. angel. On the bottom half she's a fish. And she's naked. A, and she's naked. She's a queen of the sea. She has a crown. That means that she's in a position of authority, and her allegiance is to the northern star. But even then, still you can see the tail of the fish separate. Like yes, her legs are open. Yeah. Um, which stimulates immorality. So those who are partaking of Starbucks, they don't know that they are partaking of something that is dedicated to the Northern Star, dedicated to the Marine Kingdom, dedicated to mermaid spirits, Hybrids. and it will affect your life. It will. There's no escaping it. And Satan has to show you what he's doing. He has to show you this is what I'm. This is this is what I'm selling you. Are you willing to buy it? And people Imagine buy. Imagine people work hard and then they go and buy. They go and buy it. Yes. So you can see the same on star logo right there in 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 this logo. It's just crazy. Lucifer has placed his symbols everywhere. Only the spiritually awake can see. 
but the spiritually dead see nothing. Like, in uh, fact, they'll say that we're overreacting and we're conspiracy theories. But at this point, if you're not a conspiracy theorist, you are probably spiritually dead. Yes, like a company like MTN will say, welcome to the new world everywhere you go. And you know what they're trying to build? A new world order. Yes. And the, the, no, it's just plain. People can see, but they can't They can't understand, you know. They don't know how to read the signs. You find other companies, a company like Coke, marketing its brand with people covering one eye and all that. What are they trying to show you? The all-seeing eye. And when you look at the logo, you look at the signs, and you know exactly what, you know, these companies, uh, like where they get their source of power. Amen. And now, check out the next OnStar logo, Converse All-Star. These are the Chuck Taylors, but like Converse, how, how common is this shoe? Like everybody has had these shoes before. No, it, goes, it goes on and on. You'll see the circle and you'll see a star in the middle of the circle. Look at Mercedes-Benz. You'll see the star in the middle of a circle or you'll see a, a circle in the middle of a star. Look at the Bank of India. This is the Bank of India logo. There's an inverted pentagon inside of a star with a circle inside of it. And a woman is standing inside of it with a trident. She's holding a trident and a lion, a lion is laying at her feet. Let's have a closer look. Can you see the woman holding a trident? And can you see she's standing by a lion? Witchcraft symbolism is all over every industry in the world look at coldwell banker this is just a um it's a bank but you can see the northern star right there the star above the b in coldwell banker represents the north star which is sirius the symbol for lucifer the bright and morning star coldwell banker's market capitalization is at about 1.4 billion us dollars look at uh benelli Benelli is another uh, is another company. You see the circle. You see the star. They're they're paying homage to the northern star, to the north star. Here's the energy star logo. I'm now, talking about the energy star. There are also energy drinks with the symbols of six six six. Yes, we'll get to that. Look at this. The energy star is the trusted government backed symbol for energy efficiency, helping us all save money and protect the environment through energy efficient products and practices. The Energy Star label was established to one, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and other pollutants caused by the inefficient use of energy. A product earns an Energy Star label by meeting the energy efficiency requirements set forth in Energy Star product specifications. So it is basically a label that a product can earn if they meet the specifications of this organizations of this organization but you, you can see the energy star on star look at this macy's department store in the u.s with a wide range of products for sale ranging from clothes to perfume and accessories etc etc so there's macy's paying homage to the north star here's the inverted satanic pentagram uh, here, here the Baphomet, which is another form of Satan, can be seen teaching children with hands saying, and his hand, the way he's posing with his hands, he's saying, as above, so below, which is a satanic mantra. It means, as the principalities and powers have built strongholds in the heavens, so do here on earth. It is a, it is a corruption of the Lord's prayer, where the Lord prays, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven in matthew 6 10. so satan wants the exact opposite of god's will to be done so he says on earth as it is in hell that's why you see celebrities also making the same pose lupita did the same yes uh, many celebrities yes you see you see lupita pose. posing with one hand up one hand down you see you see um so many of these stars it's 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 like after a while once your eyes are open you just say oh my god this it's it's everywhere it's ridiculous it's there's so many sellouts all right so toys r us is a toy store in the u.s that focuses on the sale of toys to children for children 
Here is check you can the see toys. the star. Check the toys. You, yeah, look, have get a good look at the toys that you're buying you for your out. children. You can see this giraffe that is posing. It looks very cute. They make Satan's things look really cute and really acceptable. Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Look at the flag of Turkey. I mean, this thing is everywhere, man. This this is this is another nod to the North Star. Look at Harry Potter. The Harry Potter movies are filled with the witches and the magicians of Europe. This Harry Potter logo has the symbol for lightning, which is electric shock, which is how Satan was cast out of heaven. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke chapter 10 verse 18. Speaking of lightning, check out the Kenya Power logo for our brothers and sisters in Kenya. Look at that. KPLC. You can see sun worship. Can you see the sun? The lion and the pyramid. Are they there by accident? No way. But I thank God that Psalms 91 verse 13 says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The adder is a poisonous, venomous serpent. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. And then as you're still going to the other symbol, there is one company that Lil Nas X was promoting. It's a company that uh, manufactures shoes. Is it Nike? Which kind of shoe was he promoting? It had blood in, in, inside. It was so demonic, like Nike, yes. So yes. we are not attacking any company. We are just telling you to know the signs and see if you you agree with those signs and symbols. Yeah, but now back to Harry Potter. So Harry Potter casts his spells using a magic wand made of a kind of wood which comes from the holly tree. Holly, H-O-L-L-Y. The common European holly is used in Christmas decorations and cards. It is quite possible that the holly tree with thorns is the very wood which was used to make the crown of thorns which was placed on Jesus' head during the time of his crucifixion. Can you see the holly tree with thorns? Can you see that it has um, berries? You see the red cherry looking berries that it produces? You see the sharp leaves? Okay. And look at this poem, this Christmas poem. Bright as glows the holly berry, bright as gleam its pointed leaves. Be the gladsome spells that Merry Christmas round your fireside weaves. Gladsome spells during Christmas. And there's the holly tree right there. So, can you you, you hear the, the, the Christmas carols? Deck the halls with... Balls of holly, la 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 la. You see, what is holly? This comes from the holly tree with which they use to cast spells. All right, so look at Jeremiah chapter 10 from verse 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord, which the Lord speaks unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Then he gives his counsel. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They decorate it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Can you see the Christmas tree? Here's the holly. You see this wreath? They call it a wreath. It was a. This was the crown of thorns that they placed on his head. You see how wicked? You see and how if evil? You take the, the wreath to uh, to the dead people when they have died. You put the wreath on the coffin. Yes, yes, oh, they yes. do that. They do the presidents do that all the time. So the Christmas wreath is meant to be a symbol of eternal life. But eternal life only comes from Jesus. In Matthew 27, verse 29, the Bible says, And when they had plotted, plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. This is the this was the a, a wreath or this was the a plated crown of thorns made from the holly tree. All right, so in 1 John 5, 13, these things have I written unto you 
that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Of course, the Christmas wreath is made of the holly tree. They say that the holly tree is meant to be a symbol of eternal life, but how, how can the holly tree give eternal life when eternal life only comes from the Lord Jesus? So, um, check out this clip of Harry Potter showing um, a witchcraft spell. He's casting a witchcraft spell. And when he cast the Petronas spell, it would create a bright silver light that would bedazzle or enchant or bewitch the onlooker. Is it any wonder that the movies are also called the silver screen? Have you noticed that Harry Potter is a nerd who studies and practices witchcraft until he becomes a wizard? Could it be that the wizard nerds of this world have cast a spell on the masses for money and power? It's true. This is also how Hollywood bedazzles, enchants, and bewitches onlookers who seek to be entertained unknowingly by devils weaving magic and deception into a spider's web of witchcraft and sorcery. I spoke about the web in one of the documentaries. I think you can go and watch those documentaries that we uploaded before. Remember, yes. I spoke about how my grandmother taught me how to create a web and trap souls. Yes, yeah. yes. Look at Colombia casting her spell. We see that the enemy has the ability to cast spells in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let's look at a few more Masonic logos and companies. Here's Sony PlayStation. Can you see the X and the O? Can you see the, the symbolism here? Um, let's look at Xbox. Can you see the star and the circle in Xbox? The spells of witchcraft and sorcery are ongoing. Every day, everywhere, we are inundated with symbols and sorcery that program our subconscious minds with programming that alters our behavior so that we collectively and individually behave in a way that is against God and against our own best interests and in the interests of those who cast the spells. Spells blind the mind to the truth. Satan gives these witches the power to cast spells. This gives these witches money, power or fame or all of the above. Remember 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light which is the knowledge of the word of God, the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 4. So there is a light that must shine on the mind of mankind, and that light is the light of Christ. Only that light can break the spell of spiritual blindness and slumber, which the devil has cast on humanity. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 5. My mom, a spell. Yes, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Is it any wonder that the crown of thorns made from the holly tree was placed on the head of Christ? If Christ does not illuminate your mind with himself, you will be manipulated by the sorceries that fill this world. Remember, nerds are very well educated and bright wizards are casting spells on humanity for their own selfish gain. Did you know that Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple Computers, is a Freemason? Yep. Here's, here's Steve right here. He's a proud Freemason. All right. Now check out the Apple logo. Could this be the bite of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which Adam and Eve consumed and spiritually died? Mm-hmm. Could the kingdom of darkness be giving Freemasons technology in the same way that God's children receive revelation when they pray to the Father? Mm -hmm. Let them just watch the alien invasion, the yeah. video. We spoke about Cleo, the mm -hmm. alien who, who is very knowledgeable with uh, uh, computers and who was working with telecom companies. Yes, yes. And other, so many companies that Cleo was working with and giving them uh, knowledge. Yes. Check out this, this logo for Sony Vio. 
They say that the A symbolizes a sound wave, while the one and the zero represents the language a computer understands, which is ones and zeros. But we know better. The A in Vio obviously has the all-seeing eye, and the ones and the zeros are obviously the way uh, a human being com communicates with a computer. But could the symbols of Freemasonry be so ubiquitous or common that we don't even suspect some of them which we see every day? And I'm suspecting that the shirt and the tie is also a symbol of the compass and the square. I just kind of, I just wear it because it's, it's supposed to be, it's commonly accepted as official dress. But when I noticed that, I said, oh my goodness, this is stuff that we do. This is stuff we wear. It's everywhere. The compass and the square. Because if we think about it, what is the use of the tie? What purpose does it really serve? Could it be the Freemason's promise to cut the throat of the Freemason who reveals the secrets of the Lodge? Look at these Freemasons clapping their hands and slicing their throats. It's, it's like it's, it's, it's in our faces. Walt Disney himself was a 33rd degree Freemason. Can you see this logo? Can you see how uh, Walt Disney animates a castle, which is supposedly Satan's domain, and then the dome that covers the entire castle, which is like the firmament that covers the earth. That's how the earth really looks. It's covered by a firmament. This is the villain cat from Disney's animated film, Cinderella. The cat's name, Lucifer. I mean, go figure. It's like, can it get more any more obvious? Walt Disney himself was a 33rd degree Freemason who worshipped Lucifer. And you can see the various pictures of Walt Disney and even in his signature, which they use as the brand for Walt Disney, you can see the three sixes. You can see yes. it's in the W, it's in the, the dot and the I, and it's in the... Because look at that Y. What kind of Y is that? So those are that's 666. You can see the three sixes in the Walt Disney logo. So Walt Disney content is filled with witchcraft and sorcery. Walt Disney programming is textbook satanic mind control. If your children are watching Walt Disney or have been watching it, their behavior will be rebellious and they will begin to manipulate you or play satanic games with each other. That programming will show up in their behavior. That's guaranteed. We used to watch that stuff all the time and we didn't know why we were behaving the way we were. This is the eye. This symbol here is the eye of Horus, the Egyptian god. Now, the symbol of this god can be seen in many places. Can you see CBS News USA? Can you see the symbol for Time Warner? The Time Warner shows include, but are not, but is not limited to the Gilmore Girls, Smallville, The Big Bang Theory, Supernatural. There's another series called Friends. There's Buffy, the vampire slayer. There's Big two, brother. two and a half men, the West Wing, One Tree Hill, Gossip Girl, Full House, Steven Spielberg presents Freakazoid, Tiny Toon Adventures, Charmed, which is a, which is a, a series about three witches, <laughs> The Flash, The Dukes of Hazard, Animaniacs, Bronco, Batman, the animated series. Dexter's Laboratory. I used to watch this stuff. Uh, what I Like About You, Pinky and Brain, uh, Pinky and the Brain, sorry, and Pretty Little Liars, etc., etc. Big Brother Africa. Yeah, this is, I mean, all of this stuff, it's all the same. It's all Freemasonry. What you're looking at in mainstream media, mainstream publications, you're looking at the PR agency of Freemasonry. MTV is one of them, notorious Freemasonic television. BET2 and BET Gospel 2 is controlled by them. Monster Energy Drink. Look at the Vav. You see the, the, the small top and the long bottom that is drawn. It is, it, it is, the, it is Hebrew. It, it, it's the word Vav. The numerical value for Vav is six. So when you look at Monster Energy Drink, you're looking at Vav, 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 which is six, six, six. Yes. So look at look at Procter & Gamble. They make most of the household items that everyday people consume. This is the 1850s Procter & Gamble uh, logo. They began using an outline of the man in the moon as its logo. And can you see the stars 
inside the circle that's on star north star worship lucifer worship freemasonry 1882 he had a smiling face and was surrounded by 13 stars this is proctor and gamble's logo then in 1930 the curls that made up his face <clears throat> were more intricate and ended up hurting the company because you could see the 666 in his in the curls of his face you can still see the stars and the moon's face all right so critics began seeing hidden horns and 666 symbols in his hair and beard and you see the horn on his head and then you can see the 666 the inverted 666 and you can see the horn coming around see like this is just so these companies they're just so demonic it's everywhere 1991 png decided to straighten the man in the moon's hair so they removed those horns and stuff to make it a little bit more friendly but it was still it's still demonic 2013 png is ready to revisit its history and the new logo shows a silver a sliver of the moon so can you see the new png logo and what do they manufacture baby care pampers they manufacture fabric care tide detergent ariel can you see that this the logo for ariel is a hexagram six points six sides and is made up of six uh sides on the uh inner hexagon and obviously six 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 in the hexagram downy fabric protection and softeners uh feminine care <laughs> PNG uh, manufacturers always. And Christians need to go into <laughs> the manufacturing business. We need look, to support Christians. Look, look, grooming, uh, brawn, Gillette. Uh, Gillette, Venus for women. Venus is another name for Lucifer, for Satan. Yes. Hair there, care. There are also Venus lotions. and. Yes. Uh, head and shoulders, shampoo, herbal essences, hair care. It go, the list goes on and on. Pantene, hair care, home care, Febreze, fairy, oral care, Crest, toothpaste, and Oral-B. Gillette, razors and skin care. Olay, face and skin care. Huh. Luke chapter 12, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. That's what Jesus prophesied. That's what's happening now. This is just to name a few of the products manufactured by this company. Look at the McDonald's food chain, the fast food chain, world famous. It might be it might, it might not be big in Africa, but in the rest of the world, McDonald's is huge. The symbol comes from the ram's horns, which is the zodiac symbol for Aries. Can you see McDonald's? Aries, the ram's horns. Check out the Vesica Pisces for MasterCard. The symbol of the water sign Pisces, which is the 12th zodiac, the 12th sign of the zodiac. When the circles overlap, they become the symbol of the female reproductive part. Can you see the blasphemous symbol of Mary, the mother goddess, inside the Vesica Pisces? Can you see? Can you see what they're doing? It's also the symbol for MasterCard. Remember, we showed you the symbol of the obelisk, which is the male organ, inside the Vesica Pisces, which is the female part, when we showed you the Washington Monument here. You see the Vesica Pisces, the female reproductive part, and the male combined in the sex act, and this is the Washington Monument. <laughs> The male organ is inside the female organ. This is called the Washington Monument located in America's capital city, Washington, D.C., or Washington District of the Goddess Columbia. So you can't tell me that America was founded on biblical principles. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Let truth be told. It was founded on the occult. And we saw how 007 influenced the exploration of the new world. All right, so it is a monument dedicated to America's first president, George Washington. It was the tallest building in the world when it was first built in 1884. It also means the intersection between the physical and the spiritual world. The number eight also signifies eternity, as you can see the number eight there. Yeah, so this is Pisces. It's a water sign. It's the 12th sign of the zodiac. For astrologers, it is a symbol of the womb. 
fertility and generation. Here are some corporations who use the Vesica Pisces symbol or sign. Chanel. Have you ever heard of Chanel? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Look at this. Ever heard of cool cigarettes? Hmm. Ever heard of Audi? How about the Christian fish symbol? Mm hmm. That one is very cool. They'll say, oh, no, 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 no. This one belongs to the kingdom of God. This one is for Jesus. And hold, hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Have you ever seen this that in the scripture that there's any symbol that is supposed to describe Christianity? <laughs> so where did this symbol come from? It came later on. And from our investigation, this is a Vesica Pisces. Please remember that there is no scripture in the Bible where we are commanded to use symbols as representations of Christ. The Lord gave no such commandment, so it must have come from some other source at a later time. Since we do not know the origin of that source, it is better to err on the side of caution. Do you remember the occultic sun cross symbol? It was a symbol of Gnosticism. Gnostic is the Greek word for knowledge. This is a new age religion. Well, it can also be found on, guess what? BMW. Symbol found on BMW logo is the occultic sun cross. First, first Corinthians chapter eight, verse one says, now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. He's telling us that this knowledge, Gnosticism, they were, it, it was a cult of, uh, that came out during the times when Jesus had just ascended. It was a cult that was meant to derail Christians. It was called Gnosticism, that one attains salvation through g gaining deep esoteric knowledge of the occult. And then they and then they and then they gain, you know, uh, freedom or or uh, ascendance. This is just false doctrine, idolatrous garbage. So there's another symbol called the triquetra, which is the logo for some companies you may have seen before. The triquetra is a combination of three Vesica Pisces. It was also called the Celtic knot, and it was believed to provide an unbreakable circle of protection. But we know that protection only comes from God. In Psalms chapter 127, verse 1, the Bible says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. Now, can you see the Celtic knot or yes. the triquetra? Yes. On the Mercedes Benz? Mm -hmm. And it's also the star inside the circle. Yeah. Can you see Mitsubishi Motors, mm -hmm. the Triquetra, which is also a pyramid? <laughs> I think you're beginning to see the point here. Mitsubishi's symbol is both the pyramid and the Celtic knot. Remember, we are not saying that as Christians, we cannot use the things that have, that have these satanic symbols. Because in order to do that, you would have to leave this world. The key here is to live holy and to not love the things of this world because they are vanity. Let's have a look at Regions Bank. Have a look at the logo for Elevation Church, a pyramid inside the sun. Have a look at the Potter's House. The Potter's House logo is the inverted pyramid. Now, if you turn that logo over, you can see that it is a pyramid with the with the all seeing eye at the top. But this is the Potter's House. This is a Christian organization with inverted Delta symbols. We know that this is of the devil. When the logo is turned upside down, you can see the pyramid with the circle at the top, a toxic mixture of Christianity and the occult. First John chapter two from verse 15 to verse 17, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. This world is full of vanity the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now we can see just how much the occult and Satanism has intertwined itself with almost everything in this world. 
That's why 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 12 to verse 14 makes so much sense now. Our Bible says, Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 12 to verse 14. I think we have really stretched it beyond our time. You know, we've, we wanted to include as much information as possible in this one publication. However, symbolism will go on. There's still more symbols to expose. However, at least we've got you started in being able to look at and interpret and seek the meaning of the symbols that are all around you every day. They have meaning. They're full of meaning. They have implications on your conscious and your subconscious mind. They have an effect on you and you have a right to know and you have a right to make a decision whether you want to be affiliated with an organization that so blatantly portrays those symbols front and center usually. And you make the decision whether you want to join them or not. And uh, I know as the spirit leads, we'll be continuing with signs and symbols still. Uh, the more we we see these symbols and signs, we will still come and, and share with you. Amen, amen, amen. So if you have not received Christ, we would like to pray with you right now. The whole world is governed by the occult by operations of the kingdom of darkness, you can see that they are operating on an industrial scale in every industry there is. They are operating through manufacturing, through banking, through the social, political, and economic structures of this world. They are all of the occult. They are all of the devil. And so you must make a decision whether you're going to serve the Lord Jesus or you're going to serve the devil, but you will decide either way. Jesus said, he that is not for me is against me. And he that does not gather with me scatters abroad. And that means that there is no gray area. There is nobody who is not on this side or that side. No, by refusing to choose a side, you have chosen a side and you've chosen the side of the kingdom of darkness. So I urge you to pray with me this prayer right now, the prayer of salvation, to turn away from your sins and to turn away from the systems of this world that have literally raised you from your childhood with indoctrinations of false doctrine of pagan Babylonian idolatry and sun worship and devil worship. We've all been raised in it. We've all been educated in these systems. And that's why the Bible says, be thou transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Let us pray. Just repeat after me. Say, Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I have heard your word. I've heard your word. I believe that you sent your son. I believe that you sent your son. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. To die for my sins. To die for my sins. On the cross. On the cross. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the only begotten son. That Jesus is the only begotten son. Of the most high God. Of the most high God. I believe. I believe. That you raised him from the dead. That you raised him from the dead. And now. And now he is seated, he is seated on the right hand of the Father. On the right hand of the Father, far above principalities, far above principalities and powers, in powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. Of the darkness of this world. Jesus, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you come into my heart and be my master? And be my master, my savior, my savior, and my Lord. And my Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Wash and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I choose to live for you. I choose to live for you. I turn my back on this world. I turn my back on this world. And everything that is in it. And everything that is in it. That is of the devil. That is of the devil. And I look to you. At, that I look to you as my Lord. As my Lord and my God, and my God from now on, from now on, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray, I pray, Amen, Amen. If you prayed that prayer, yes, you now know that life is spiritual. May now. the Lord bless you. We yes. pray that the Lord may preserve you and protect you. Amen. In the in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Remember, this is not for fear, but yeah. this is to inspire faith in all of you that you that you would depend not on the things of this world. Mm -hmm. but on the word of God, because everything in this world is going to be destroyed. God yes. is going to annihilate this world. 
And so we know this, we know what is coming. We have our hope and our faith in Christ who will come. And when he comes, it's all over. Yeah. It's over. It's yes. a, we're at the end of the movie now. We're at the end of the book. We're in the book of Revelations now. We're at the very end. And I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yes. Amen. Saints, I love you. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. Let us know what you think about everything that we upload. Yes, yes. Share this with others that their eyes may be opened. Also, people need to know this information. They've been indoctrinating us since we were children, and we have a right to know, and others should know. All right? And others should spend their time to study, to learn about the world that they live in. Amen. Please also go ahead and buy uh, some of the products that we have made available. Life is Spiritual t-shirts and Life is Spiritual. Uh, it's a great way to get a conversation started with strangers. They'll ask, what do you mean Life is Spiritual? It's written on your shirt. It's a great way to start the conversation. You can lead people to Christ just through that epiphany right there. Also, Life is Spiritual. Yeah, also our books are available. Uh, we have from Erica Part 1 to Erica Part 4 and the truth about money. So you can also, if you, if you need to get more information, you can go and on Amazon or on our website and get those books. We are yes. still writing more books and we intend to make some movies. So by buying these items, you're promoting the ministry. And uh, Erica Part 5 will be coming soon. Hallelujah. It's called Altars and Covenants. Very powerful book. You need to read that book book it is incredible and now may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord cause his face to shine upon you may he lift up his countenance upon you and do you good we love you god bless you i'm baba zion erika mukisakimani aka baba maisha of mami zion amen